Hello, welcome back to the Hearthstone Global Games where I just made a very insulting comment and I didn't mean it. I apologize, mm -hmm. Cora. Oh dear. <laughs> Cora is at uh, Cora is Brazil's pick. Other way around. Brazil is Cora's pick for the Hearthstone Global <laughs> Games. I am Brazil's pick as well. <laughs> Which is why I uh, made that horrible comment about Brazil being eliminated. Though uh, as we're playing, okay. I'm up two one over caster predictions today. I'm as we've been playing this it. game all day. Actually, is it? I of course no, am going to be three one. You lose. You're three one. Yeah. Ukraine, South Korea, China. Oh yeah. Ha! I could still end 3-3. Three, three. be 4-1. Let's take a look at this bracket, as I'm, of course, going to be supporting Netherlands on this. Um, yeah, so it's going to be... Where are we? Oh, this is page one. Got a little bit confused for a second there. Page one, you know, the United States, Taiwan, New Zealand, Canada are going to be playing on Thursday. But for the rest of today, it's these games that you can see here on page two of the bracket. Uh, Mexico versus Italy is the last game today. Netherlands versus Brazil coming up first. The winner of this series is going to be playing against Ukraine next week. We have some great games coming up today, the rest of today, and uh, I'm a little bit scared of you right now. No, I, I know, I know. Obviously, I picked Brazil from the get-go. Obviously, over in uh, the the U.S. side of things, we've been casting mostly South America and, and Asia Pacific. So I felt it would only be right to pick a country that is in the region that I would be casting for, you know more than 10 weeks of this tournament. So I went with Brazil and I stand by my pick, but I can't help but think that a Netherlands versus Ukraine quarterfinal would be would be pretty sweet. It'd be pretty good. Uh, okay, oh yeah, that's true. So Let's I'll give look. it to you. I'll, I'll concede that much. Let's but Brazil's look. still going to win, so that, that won't be reality. Talk us through your players then, Cora. <laughs> All right, so the beautiful Brazilians. We have Legolas with a capital S, Kagloran, Loxodontus, and Leo Main, four great guys, all really even um, levels of competitive experience. They they work very well together, so I really like this team for that reason. And then Netherlands, it, it, you can't deny Netherlands is a fantastic team. You have Tice, Tyler, Theo, and Mitsu Hide. Four great guys, four fantastic players, a nice mix of streamers and competitive players in there. It's it's a great team. Yeah, you know who Team Netherlands are. And even with the streamers, even with Tyler, for example, yeah, okay, he's a streamer. You mean he the grinder? He, I mean the grinder, not the streamer, because he doesn't stream for entertainment purposes. He streams because he just wants to win a lot, load of games. He wants yeah, to teach people how to play, he's good. learn himself, him. and he is fantastic. In fact, I had a chat with Tyler yesterday and asked him, you know, do you, how do you feel? Are you gonna are you gonna take down Brazil? And he said, Yeah, we're super confident about taking down Brazil. Uh, we don't take them lightly, of course. We did do our research, and we've put together a lineup that has the edge over them. Hmm. We'll be the judge of that, hey, Tyler. Uh, he also said, I believe it was him that said, that, yeah, he said that they have some patterns in their strategy. They do. Uh, That's true. Which they've noticed, and they believe they can take advantage of these patterns. Mm -hmm and use it against them. And I said to him, we'll find out more about that in the interview if they win. Thing is, Brazil started off a little bit rocky in this tournament, playing some weird stuff. And then since then, they've sort of found their groove. They've been working a lot better together, and they've started to bring more consistent decks, but they have generally just been the top tier decks. So I can definitely see how that might be a little bit predictable. And Netherlands is certainly a team that would want to take advantage of that. All right, well, the first game is going to be Leo Main on Brazil's side versus Mitsuhide competing for the Netherlands. Hunter versus Druid. Hunter. First Hunter we're seeing today. We're seeing a Hunter. We that, are going to be seeing a Hunter. That is a surprise in itself. Not quite as surprising as if we saw a Warlock. No, uh, that might just, a uh, couple coronaries out there. I don't think there were any Hunters in HCT whatsoever last weekend. Unfortunately, it's also kind of fallen off as one of the one of the least played classes. It definitely has. But knowing what we know now about the Quest Rogue quest having been nerfed today, assuming then that Jade Druid will be more popular, Hunter, mid-range Hunter specifically, is an aggressive opener and a great mid-range to Savannah high main finish, which can work wonders against a Jade Druid. So if that's what you're expecting, that works very well too. Also, Hunter's got some good early game, which can keep up against Aggro Druid. So it does seem like a very well-balanced class towards Druid, which you might just expect Netherlands to pick because it is such a strong class. It's hard to tell because Netherlands paired Druid with Mage. Like, you don't really yeah. put Mage in the aggressive 
or in the control E? They're both too flexible. So, uh, whereas if it's like Druid with Hunter, you expect the Druid to be Jade and the Hunter. Although we called that wrong earlier. So, who knows? Predicting these guys is this just is too why hard. We... The Hearthstone Global games, mind games are real. Uh, Death We've Alor, been thoroughly mind gamed. We have been. Death Alor said to me weeks ago now that he believes the Hearthstone Global Games is a format with so many different possibilities. A lot of people look at it and just think, oh, you just, you just pick some classes and then pick which one you want to play. And it's, it's really not simple. Sometimes the more simple it looks, the more complicated it actually is to get your head around mm -hmm. and outthink your opponent. I mean, the, the way that the teams have been pairing their classes together has really evolved over the course of the tournament. It definitely started with the weakest class being that ninth class, and I think it sort of reverted back to that, um, with Warlock being that ace pick. But in the middle there, Warlock was being paired with like Mage or Paladin or Warrior, where you knew that that was going to be the definitive class that they were playing. But then it was sort of easy to target against that class, especially if it was um, a deck that that team was particularly good with. So here it does look like we are going to have a Jade Druid and a mid-range style Hunter because, well, that's the only Hunter that's been around for quite a while. Yeah, it's the only, uh, it's the main Hunter you think about when you think Hunter. Sometimes secret Hunters appear, sometimes there's the weird little face Hunter build, but no, more often than not, this is the way you go correctly called as well. It is a J Druid, so maybe maybe Netherlands did get out mind games. I don't know. We'll have to see. J Druid, like I've been saying for the last several matches when it's been up against, aggressive decks has a good amount of interaction in the early game, and we've seen it thrive and we've seen it you know, fall on its face. So, this will have to be one of the two. I guess we'll see which one. Yeah. Now, Decent-ish start for Liam Ayn. They, they, they like to have Ali Armakit. Uh, Ali Armakit? Hang on a second, that's not right. <laughs> Ali Cat. Ali Armakitten is where he's going with that. <laughs> and they like to have the Ali Cat into something like a Direwolf Alpha or a Scavenging Hyena. Oh my god, that would have to be at least a 2-1. <laughs> Throw some armor onto that cat. Don't give it to don't give it to Ali Cat, give it to Cute Cat. Cute Cat. Tabby Cat. Cute Cat takes all the armor. Yeah. Um, Fiery Bat's gonna have to do. I don't know where I was going with that name. Cat Lento and Ellie Armor Cat. <laughs> there you oh go. God. Blizzard. Next expansion. Do with it what you will. When Night. Calento, when Calento wins the World Championships this year, you know, as 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 will happen, um, Cat Lento can be his card. Yeah. Like Fiery Bat. Okay, so the Fiery Bat goes down on turn one. Wild Growth for Mitsuhide. It's kind of slow. He's going to be taking some damage from this from this fiery bat next turn, and Brazil have the chance to play the crackling razor more on it if they want to. That's something that you definitely don't want to give to the hunter because hunter is a class that doesn't do anything no, incredibly <laughs> special. But they need to curve out one through six, and if they do, and they get their hunter synergy in there with crackling razor maw, houndmaster. Um, Direwolf Alpha, which can allow the early minions to trade up quite well, then it, it, it spirals out of control and it can be very, very difficult to stop the commanding board presence from the Hunter. And in a lot of cases, Hunter struggles with that one through six curve. This isn't looking like it's going to be one of the cases. Right. The Hunter has a very, very nice start here. And the Druid is going to need swipe, taunt minions, uh, health gain, any number of things to combat this hunter board. I wouldn't even be surprised here if Leo Main decided to play the coin this turn. Just played Alley Cat, coined out Direwolf Alpha, maybe coined out Crackling Razor Maw. Just puts as much stuff on the board as possible. He does need to consider the fact that Swipe is playable next turn, I guess. I think Crackling Razor Maw makes a lot of sense here because you can get something like plus three health or Divine Shield onto this or even just plus three attack and get in. Um, and then Alley Cat you can save to sort of slot in whenever it makes the most sense. I think you're going to want to coin Savannah High Main in this game. So the coin likely will be held for quite a while. Dire Wolf Alpha accomplishes pretty much the same goal, yeah. pushes one additional damage, gets a body on the board, and now you can save Crackling Razor Maw for, you know, maybe to put on Rat Pack. If you give that additional uh, attack, then additional rats are spawned when it dies. The one problem with this is that with double Wrath, or even with just Wrath Hero Power, Mitsuhide is able to clear this entire board if he wants to. And I don't see any reason that he wouldn't do that this turn. Getting rid of a Hunter's board is, is very, very valuable use of your turn. I think a lot of this Direwolf Alpha over Crackling Razor Maw play was actually fueled by 
there not being any interaction on turn two from Netherlands. Right. Wild Growth was played instead of a Wrath or a Hero Power, which seemed like it would have been perfectly fine on turn two. I certainly would have faulted them for it. So maybe Brazil thought that a Hero Power would have to come down this turn onto the Fiery Bat, and the Wolf has a chance of living then. Well, it's kind of worked out for both sides, actually, because Liam Main is now able to <laughs> curve directly into the Rat Pack. And as you said before, that attack buff could be, even plus one plus one, it's an extra rat. It's more survivability for the rat pack. It's definitely a minion that, that benefits more off of the adapt than a lot of the others do. Alternatively, uh, Brazil could just ignore, the, just not play the Razor more, play Alley Cat and Animal Companion next turn, coin out Savannah High Main, and then try and get that some Wind Fury. Wow, <sighs> That's scary. Yeah. That, I mean, that's that's game winning. I mean, a, a six attack Savannah Highmane hitting your face once is bad enough, but if it hits your face twice in one turn... Well, I mean, so if Savannah Highmane hits your opponent's face, you just win the game. I mean, that's... That's, 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 that's history, the right? Armor Smith wins brawls, and Savannah Highmane hits face, and you win. Don't think that's as true anymore as it used to be. But you're right, that is, that's the well, same. Well, how often do we actually see Savannah Highmane hit face now? That's fair, that's fair. There's a swipe. Okay. Time waits for no one. Swipe is going to be great if Brazil do, as I just said, and play Companion into Alicat. Then Swipe will just destroy Leo Man. I think it's probably the best play as well. Yeah, it's unfortunate. You could coin Crackling Razor Maw, but... Then you lose coin high main on five. Yeah. And it, in this, at least if swipe has to come down on this board, then you're going to be able to coin high main into what's most likely a clear board. Yeah. Maybe a one one still left. Yep, you're right. Even after the swipe, Savannah high main actually seems strong. You wasting the coin here at this just before the key turn you've been waiting for would just be. Unfortunate. Um, is he considering just passing? Oh, okay. I wondered if he was going to try and play around the swipe and just not play any of his minions that have one health. No way so around swipe it. hero power. And then Brazil still has initiative with the coin high main. Yeah. I think that high main is going to be hitting the face at least once. I've got to say. So if, if, if what you say is true, then Brazil have already won this. I don't want to put the, the stress on them. Eaglehorn bow. This is still very much winnable for Netherlands. Yeah, I mean, absolutely. The, the bow into the Glutton of is going to help Mitsuhide out a lot. <laughs> but what do they need to start with? Their hand is a lot of utility right now, but it's not strong independently. It's going to require Nourish into a couple of draws or gadgets in for additional Jade synergy minions. Oh, the ooze coming down before the bow. He just needs the tempo. It's just pretty important at this point that he's got a way of dealing with that high main before it gets too out of control. Is this... Now these minions trade into the high main as well as one hyena. Yeah. But let's see. If that gets Wind Fury, that's 12 damage now. Putting Netherlands down to 11. Kill Command can then put Netherlands to six, although they would just hero power. Mm -hmm. But very, very soon they will have the damage they need to just win. If this gets Wind Fury. Nope. Mm, Divine Shield's okay. Divine Shield, Poison Spit, Shrouding Mist. Uh, stealth would be fine if it had already attacked once. Yeah. Yeah, okay. This is much slower. Liamane isn't going to get a win this way anywhere near as fast as he was before. But it's it's still an enormous amount of pressure. Still making progress. Second Nourish means that Mitsuhide will have nothing that he can really develop this turn. So you try to mitigate damage. The Razor Maw dies, one of the cats dies. And then that's still 16 damage with a hero power and kill command for Leo Main. Wow. Actually 17 with the one damage from the remaining cat. So Mitsuhide needs to armor up urgently. 
So you can Feral Rage for armor. And that appears to be the only way that he survives. I guess he could Hero Power other than Scales, but what, why would you do that when you can just Feral Rage for armor? Well, if you Hero Power down the cat, you're at 17. And then there's only 16 with Command oh, okay. and Hero right. Power. So if you Hero Power just barely. Then, then but, yeah. I mean, Unleash the Hounds wouldn't be enough mana, so you, you feel okay in that situation. I, I don't really see a reason why you wouldn't. Oh, it's getting close. Mitsuhide is Counting going to... every point of damage. Yep. He's going to struggle to stabilize here. Leomane picking up Firefly. That does very little at this stage in the game. That's more annoying minions that Netherlands will need to clear. Does Leomane play the kill command this turn? I kind of don't see why not. Just push as much damage as possible, set up the hero power lethal over a few turns. It's not likely that your beast gets removed. Okay. So I, I don't know that you have to, but I think Mitsuhide can, can get a read on what's in the hand for Leomane. Okay. It's either like unleash the hounds or yeah. Or kill command. And, and you're right. How does the Savannah Hymen get destroyed? You, uh, Mitsuhide would have to pop the Divine Shield and destroy it and destroy both hyenas. Mm -hmm. That's incredibly unlikely. So there should always be a beast available to proc the kill command. May as well save it for the surprise lethal a little bit later. Okay, so Mitsuhide can play the Behemoth. Feral Rage for armor, put himself up to 14. And prevent six damage from the Hymen this turn. I, uh, that just looks like the play. Just Jade Behemoth, Feral Rage. Jade Spirit doesn't seem playable this turn. Jade Blossom doesn't seem playable this turn. Earth and Scales would also put you out of range of Kill Command Hero Power. But with one more draw and eight mana, double Kill Command Hero Power is something you need to be aware of. Now you're out of range of that. Flare, sneaky. Not going to do anything against the Jade Druid, though. Oh. Do you play it, though? I, I guess you do. You forego two damage, but you potentially make up six additional damage mm -hmm. next turn. So, yeah, it's, it's worth it. Even trading in this Flame Elemental. Sure, leaves one 3-3 three, three on the board. A 3-3 three, three that can't really trade with anything. Oh, now what does Nether now what do the Netherlands do? They can Fandral into Nourish. And then... Hopefully draw another Fell Rage. <laughs> Oh, man. 6, 12, 14, 19 damage for Brazil. Only 14 health for Mitsuhide. Netherlands needs to gain at least 6 health this turn to live. They can get 4 from the Earth and Scales and 1 more from the Hero Power. That's not enough. Is it ever worth just nourishing without using the Fandral? I wonder if there's any... Uh... Is there anything that you can do for 5 mana that you can't do for th 3? That gains you armor or puts up a taunt? I can't think of anything, not unless there's a druid of the If you cloth, pick up like but... Innervate and Jade Behemoth. Oh, okay, sure. With Innervate, yeah. Well, can I just earth and scales the fire? There, there's six, so I'm that's enough. For no one. Yeah. 20 health versus <laughs> 19 damage. Yep. I guess it will be 21 health with the hero power as well. Leomane once again, two damage off lethal. This is a lot of damage on the backswing for Mitsuhide, actually. Leomane might need to be a little player. bit... If if Brazil doesn't pick up the one, two points of damage this turn... That, uh, oh, no, it's not. Power. It's not. <laughs> because okay. of the flare. But the taunt also means that you're not as scared of the damage on board from Netherlands. Okay. Whereas this was... Almost 15. Setting up. Yeah, okay, sure. 19 with a swipe, 20 with a hero power. You were, you were pretty scared here. Um, if you put up a taunt, you're... You're not doing too bad. Two Savannah High Mains are about to smack the face. One of them going to deal eight damage by the looks of it. So you can deal six. I mean, if getting hit by the face, in the face once by a Savannah High Mains is enough to lose you the game, then 
I mean, this is like how about all third of these or fourth time. Exactly. If Brazil still loses the game here, then that, I think that is officially the death of the adage. <laughs> well, now we solved that question. That uh, that mystery. Yeah, how master gonna do its thing? Block any possible damage coming from Mitsuhide. Oh, <laughs> what? Okay, so you Just keep it going, Mitsuhide. Keep it going. Keep it going. And Vandal Nourish and Feral Rage. Isn't enough there? Uh, 6, 10, 12, 15, 17. Leo main presenting. Uh, you can get up to 13. So ah. you would need to find. Something very good. Do, do they have a second Earthen Scales left? Uh, yeah, they should do. So, so if you nourish, find Earthen Scales, then you can Feral Rage and Earthen Scales. Well, now they need Innervate and Earthen Scales. Yeah. <laughs> That's oh. One part. No, oh. the other part, though. Is so it... if they didn't play the fan jewel, they would have been able to survive yeah. this Yeah. That's got to be a little well, frustrating. Okay, so 4-3. Two goes in, six goes into the Houndmaster, and that leaves 6, 8, 10, 15. And then you'll be at 12? 13? No. 14. I'm um, not seeing it. Yeah, 14 with the hero power as well. Oh, dear. No, uh, that's okay, so oh. now like this. Seven in, two in, three goes to the Houndmaster, clear off the additional Hound. Now that's six, eight, ah. 13. That, does that do it? 11, 12, 13? No, it doesn't. No. It's not quite enough. It's exactly but very, very close. It's exactly lethal from Liamane now. Mitsuhide did what he could Whew. to try and get out of range, but the Hunter is going to take the day. Liamane winning his first game. I'm getting a little very, bit nervous about this. Very, very close. If Mitsuhide had not played the Fandral there, he could have Feral Raged and Earthen Scales and would have been able to live through that turn. Would he have still won the game? I don't know. The board presence for the Druid was significant. The Hunter just put consistent pressure with the hero power and, and two copies of Savannah Hymane. That was a close one. It's not the death of the adage just yet. If not you get hit by the yet. face by Savannah Hymane, you probably lose the game, and Mitsuhide feels the same way. Let's take a look at the game coming up next. It's going to be Kogloran versus Tice. Kogloran on the Rogue. It's a daring, daring play there for Kaglor and Tice on the Shaman. Um, a lot more standard right now, although we have seen two types of Shaman today. The Jade Spirit Echo build, as well as the Bloodlust um, Evolved Doppelgangster build, which is certainly more standard right now, more consistent across the board, I would have to say. Rogue, probably going to be Miracle Rogue. Whether it has Arcane Giants, whether it has Questing Adventure, we don't know. This was a pretty last-minute uh, addition to the roster for these guys now that the Rogue Quest was not available for play during this week of the Hearthstone Global Games because we knew that the nerf was coming. We didn't know when exactly it was coming and we didn't want it to interrupt any of the play um, by ruining some of the planned lineups. So it was simply not allowed to be played this week. And here we can see Kagloran and everybody's favorite, Tice. Yeah, Tice, an incredibly popular, one of the most popular Hearthstone player slash streamers now. And if Kuglorin's playing something weird here when it comes to Rogue, I expect Tice to be one of these players that can kind of see through it and understand what he's playing against. Tice plays a lot of different decks in his stream, he plays a lot of try-hard decks, and he plays a lot of fun decks, a lot of more, more mini decks. He, he likes to learn everything. Mm -hmm. He's he's a man of, of many decks. He, he knows what is up when it comes to Hearthstone. Not only a competitive player, but also um, a fantastic streamer, one of the most popular streamer players, like you said. and. I think a lot of the time you can look at Tice and think, you know, he's he's just a streamer. He he doesn't play competitively very much anymore, and maybe you don't respect his ability quite as much. But Tice, last year was the year of Tice uh, in a lot of ways. Tice was absolutely on a hot streak. He's cooled off a little bit for now, but he, he's still absolutely one of the best competitive he, players. He's definitely got a lot of wins behind him, a lot more than a lot of these players do, despite the fact that he's a streamer, which a lot of people, as you said, think, oh, you know, just, just a streamer. He's not a competitive player. He won so many tournaments last year. He's one of the top earners for Hearthstone tournaments. As we see this probably Miracle Rogue from Kugloran here, Shaku the Collector. Yeah, it makes some appearances in Miracle Rogue. It's not completely rare, but there's our friend once again, Sharazen, giving us a great big smile. Little wave. 
She's playing to the crowd. She's very happy that, that Quest Rogue got banned this week. She uh, gets to come out and play. Entice draws another guy who loves playing to the crowd, patches the pirate. So honestly, rather weak starts for both teams. Who's in charge now, Tice? Says patches. And Tice says, still Tice. <laughs> Ah, uh, gonna hold on to it, save it for a Flame Tongue Totem or something later. Patches can be reasonable with Flame Tongue Totem. So it's kind of pointless just throwing it into the rogue's dagger immediately. Now, Tice can dagger, uh, to, not dagger, he can totem up, he can play Jade Claws. He could coin out a Manatai Totem if he thought it was gonna live. You do have Coin Stonehill into Coin Manatide or the reverse, if that's the option you want to go with. I think I like that. Hmm. What are you really saving coin here for, right? You don't have anything in your hand that you're working up to. You need to find those cards. And the ways you're going to do it is is going to be with Stonehill and Manatide. Yep, I agree with you there. Uh, if you're playing Manatide, you're, you're banking on your opponent not having a backstab, which Miracle Rogues often do have in their opening hand. So are it's you... probably not completely safe, but does it matter? Do you just play it for the one draw? I mean, for that reason, you could go with Stonehill first mm -hmm. to try to prevent backstab plus a dagger to the Mana Tide on the next turn. Yep. Probably what Tice is considering here. Even still, you can't fault him just for a hero power this turn um, and wanting to save the coin if you do draw into a you know, thing from below or doppelgangster or something higher value that you'd like to get out quickly. Went for the Mana Tide Totem now, banking on Backstab not being present in the deck. And even if it is, okay, so it gets used and the dagger gets used to kill this. So it means the Backstab can't be used later. Shaku going to come straight down. Backstab going to deal with the Mana Tide Totem, though. Things looking pretty good for Kuglora in this game. Shaku is such a strong card when that can't get dealt with. Shaku? Shaku. I've never heard it pronounced that way. Shaku? Is that just, is oh. just, is that just a mean thing? No, I, I, no, I've heard Sunkeeper Tarim pronounced like six different ways, but right. I've never heard Shaku pronounced that way. No, that could just be a me thing. Huh. I don't hate it. Well, now I'm all self-conscious about it. It rhymes with a chew. <laughs> Ooh, okay. Stonehill Defender might actually be the pick here. Yeah, I think you want to reroll on these. Eh, Blood Creeper's good, but it's pretty late. Job's done. What'd you have to pull with Dirty Rat? Gadgets and Auctioner, I guess. Swash Burglars, Gadgets and if you can kill them immediately. Glorin just... A questing Adventure, if it's in the deck. <laughs> Edwin Van Cleef. There, there's, a, there's a fair few oh, things yeah, that true. you would like to pull. Glorin's just asking where his Edwin is, actually. <laughs> with the hat that he's got. And now he has a two-mana one-one that discounts elementals that he doesn't have. Awesome. Ah, there might be a Jade Spirit in there. There won't be a Jade Spirit in there. <laughs> Likely Jade Claw is going to come down this turn to kill off Shaku or Shaku. Shaku. I'm calling it Shaku now. <laughs> I'll call it Shaku. Dirty Rat could pull out the Fire Plume Harbinger. That's something that Kuglorin wouldn't wouldn't really care about. Nope. It's two mana. He doesn't have to spend to get that out there. <laughs> to stop it from clogging up some space in his hand, yeah. But as you said, Jade Claws. Gotta you just deal need with to Shaku. prevent the value. A lot of resources for Tice, not a lot of resources for Kuglorin. And that's just a little bit more of not a lot. Still wants that Edwin. Wouldn't mind a Gadgets and Auctioneer in this position Gadgetson either. Gadgetson might just be game winning. Gadgetson would double count up for coin, yeah, or it often can be. No Kalamos in this deck. Ooh, Cold blood. He is going in. I mean, Tice is overloaded to four mana. Jade Lightning lines up perfectly. Here. Well, that, that does force Tice's hand this turn. That's all he can do. The Jade Golem will only be a 2-2. Two -two. Again, if Brazil were to pick up Gadgets and Auctioneer now, then it would just complete this mm -hmm. picture. It would allow uh, Sharazan to come back to life very easily. Yeah. And now you've, you've seen a lot of the cheap spell resources, so everything you're going to draw into is, is going to be much higher value. Oh, two pair. Okay. 
Now, I did I did ask Tyler as well, as I asked most of the, most of the players I spoke to, what was it like trying to come up with a lineup without without Quest Rogue in the meta? And, and he was one of the players that said, it's not really that hard in this format. We just come up with our pairing, which class we want to pair Rogue with, and then go from mm -hmm. there. Don't know if they would have anticipated having to play against Quest Rogue. Sorry, Miracle Rogue. Mm -hmm. I, I myself would have kind of just written it off, I think, yeah. this week. Um, and we've seen Miracle Rogue with varying degrees of success over the course of today. This, I would have to say, is one of the lesser degrees. If a Gadgets and Auctioneer is picked up, the tide of the game changes very quickly. But Agro Shaman lines up incredibly well into all forms of Rogue because they have no health gain, no taunt minions, and very little board clear. So you can just flood the board, bloodlust, and win. And right. there's not much they can do to stop it. So I would say the Shaman's uh, pretty significantly favored here regardless. And this hand okay. certainly isn't helping. Okay, hang on. Fanonize is a good start. Kind of. If he can Fanonize... got to prep Fan and hope you pick up Gadgets and... Yep. I think it, that's it. That's probably the way to go. If Fan can pick up a second Fan, that's not horrible either. It would at least clear... Most of the board with the dagger, too. You could revive Sherazin. But you're right. Let's go, Auctioneer or, or Bust, really. Oh. oh, dear. And this is the problem with Miracle Rogue. Sometimes a Miracle Rogue hand can just beat itself. Miracle-less Rogue is worse than Cthulhu-less Warrior. <laughs> no miracles to be found here. Mm -hmm. Still... One more turn to maybe pick up that Gadgetson and turn this around. But still, no board clear in the deck. Not quite anywhere near lethal just yet for Tice, but this is the turn where he can quite easily set it up. Aya plus Flame Elemental. Hmm. If you're worried about damage, maybe you think that Brazil has... Leroy second cold blood eviscerate in hand or something crazy. I, I just don't think that the yeah, I is necessary here. Just put as much on the board as possible. Flame elemental, think mm -hmm. from below. Can't quite totem as well then, but next turn patches can come down with the bloodlust. Yes. It's another reason to keep patches. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, if you've got it in your hand, no, you're not happy about it, but maybe you make the best. Better than a one damage patches is a three damage patches with flame tongue totem, but better than that is a four damage patches with bloodlust. bloodlust. Yeah. Don't even get me started on a six damage patches. How do you do that? Flame tug and bloodlust. Ah. Oh. All right. It's so crazy, we can't even theorize about it. Final chance. And Kagloran picks up the Razor Petal Lasher. Goodness gracious. That's not going to do it. It looks like Tice is going to take the first game for Team Netherlands today. The, the, uh, the day of the sweeps actually ended quite some time ago. That was just for the first part of the mm -hmm. stream. Part two, it's going to be a little bit harder than that. I would expect this match to be quite even. I, I want this one to go long. This is the one that I, I would be certainly very happy to see a 3-2. Okay. Evolve would be a fine draw in this position if it weren't for the fact that Tice already just has lethal. Still one of my favorite sounds in the game. <laughs> it's just such overkill. I don't know. I lose too many times immediately after it gets played. So. Oh, yeah, yeah. It just, it just hurts me a little bit, but it's not hurting Tice right now. a good sound to hear, but it kind of makes me giggle. Pretty, pretty, pretty happy sound for Tice to have heard just then as he okay. takes his win. Game number two, 1-1 one, one, Brazil, Netherlands. It is going to be a close one. And it, like I said, favored for the Shaman. Um, aggressive decks against Rogue just always have that edge, and Shaman is one of the most aggressive decks in the format right now. So, not too much, really, that the Rogue has to beat themselves up about, especially with a hand that dismal, with that little interaction. Uh, nothing that could, they could do. Yeah, and next up, it's going to be Legolas versus Theo. Legolas on the mage. Theo on the rogue. Okay, hold on a second, because Tyler told the me... The reversal! Hang on a second, now I'm confused. Because Tyler said to me, you come up with, with what you pair the rogue with first, and then you go from there. Theo's paired rogue with Priest, which indicates that maybe he'd plan to play rogue all along. Because Priest is another one of these not very popular classes at the moment. It's sort of a 
sort of a fringe class, right? Priest has had some great success. It's a little bit iffy in other spots, but you, you can definitely see people playing Priest. It, and traditionally, if you paired Priest with Rogue, I would expect to see Rogue. Yeah. Today, I don't think I would. No. So I'm a bit surprised with just how much Rogue we're still seeing, even after Quest Rogue is not available. And uh, here's the thing as well. Theo bringing Rogue. Isn't Mage like the class that's most favored against Miracle Rogue? <sighs> Thanks to Ice Blocks mm -hmm. and just burn damage that can just hit the Rogue in the face over and over. It's, it's definitely up there. It's, it's one of the best. Not necessarily the matchup that Theo would have been hoping for, but we're about to see how it goes. Game number three, Netherlands versus Brazil, starts right now. Or in a couple of seconds. I was a little bit preemptive on that. Just momentarily. <clears throat> Any second now. There we go. All right. Got him. All right, let's go. <laughs> oh, we're so on point. Nailed it. All right, so Medivh Mage up against Questing Rogue. Not Quest Rogue. Very different. Questing Rogue. Questing. Okay. Three extra letters changes everything. Yeah, and again, I just think this is such a strong matchup for the Mage. This could actually be Freeze Mage, which is pretty funny. George sees Freeze Mage, runs Medivh the Guardian. Uh, and either way, Freeze Mage and Discover Mage both just seem very, very strong against against this deck to me. Hallucination is a card that can even the playing field a bit. It can. Because if, if Netherlands can get an Ice Block from a Hallucination or a Swashburglar, then it, it gives them an extra turn, and they could use that extra turn to win the game. It's a big if, though. Hallucination has a lot of cards it can draw from, and Rogue has a lot of very useless cards. Uh, or Mage, excuse me, for Rogue. So any of the other secrets, for instance, probably wouldn't give you great value, but remains to be seen if that will make much of a difference here. I do agree with you, though. Mage is, is pretty favored against Rogue, just because they pretty much match in the early game, and then burn them out. There's nothing that the Rogue can really do to stop that interaction. <sighs> what is it with, with Netherlands picking up patches in their opening hand each game? This time it looks like Theo's actually going to play it. No point in saving it for a flame turn totem. You can save patches and rogues, play it with some combo cards. But Theo decided here that wasn't the correct thing to do. And Legolas even greeting him with that emote. Did you see the fireworks there? Beautiful. He must have played the Tavern Brawl. Yeah. Did you play the Tavern Brawl? I did. I did too. I played it to get the tier 3 fireworks. Ah. Uh. No, I, I only played it once, unfortunately. That's... You only got the tier one firework. Yeah. <gasps> casual. Tavern Brawl casual. I, I mean, I don't play Tavern Brawl that often at all. So the fact I played it once was, you know, was something. It's pretty good. It was a lot of fun. Okay, well, there's Edwin. Theo actually picking it up, unlike Lagolas in the last game. The problem is his hand isn't quite as welcoming to it as, as Koglorin's, uh -huh. sorry, not Legolas, yeah. as Koglorin's hand was. Uh, if he can pick up some uh, maybe a preparation, a kind of coin, just something else to set this Edwin off, then it could be huge in a couple turns. Prep Mimic Pod Edwin at any point is yeah. a very welcome sight. But having the patches on one and have no development on two, it's a, it's a slow start for the Miracle Rogue. You'd like to get off with, you know, off to a great start with uh, pirates early on, follow it up with. You know, removal on your opponent's minions, whatever you have to do to make that Miracle Rogue thing happen. Whatever it is that they do to win all of those games. I don't know, two Ice Blocks and a Doomsayer, could this be...? I really think it could be Freeze Mage. I really do. We've seen Medivh the Guardian, but... Freeze Mages? There are Freeze Mages that run it now. There's... And there's... also Firelands Portal. But again, George sees Freeze Mage does run Firelands Portal. There's just so much overlap between all of the Mage decks. Yeah. Like 22 cards or something are identical, and then uh, one has Frost Novas, one has Cabal Crystal Runners and Counter Spells. Shimmering Tempest, another chance for a uh, for an Ice Block. I could give it to you. Uh, I've got to say, the fact that Legolas has both of his Ice Blocks already is an advantage for him. It, it can just give him the time he needs to push that burn damage into the Rogue's face. Even if you don't have access to Alexstrasza, for instance, maybe you get a little bit more minion chip damage in there. Yeah. 
because you have some extra time, it adds up. Ideally, though, he's going to need to pick up that Medivh the Guardian and play that before the Firelands portal. Contesting the board against Rogue can be tricky because they've got a lot of spells like Eviscerate, like Sap, that they can just use to cheat the board back away from you again. From what I understand of Medivh mage builds is that Medivh is like plan A. Okay. And the burn is like plan B. So you go with Medivh, get him down on the board as early as possible, and usually your opponent will have some form of weapon removal, whether it be Gluttonous Ooze or Harrison. Then you've got a 7-7 seven, seven on the board. Then you go for plan B, which is just burn him out. Right. And oftentimes plan B is going to be more consistent, but you still have Medivh in there because sometimes he just, you know, spirals the game out of control. Yeah. Yeah, that sounds about right. Excuse me. Medivh, it just... It's such a powerful board presence tool, unless the, obviously the ACH gets removed. It, it it works very often. I've got to admit, I was surprised to see Theo drop this Edwin as just a 4-4 as well, picking up the Primordial Glyph. Okay, so the wording on Glyph, is it discover a mage no. spell? It's discover, it's discover a class a spell. So, a spell. So Theo would get a rogue two. one, yeah. Okay. Still not too unhappy about it's, that. It's difficult. To, to get where the distinction is. Obviously, Shimmering Tempest says add a random mage, mage spell, not add, add, add a random spell. Oh, so man. I believe the discovers are usually um, your, own, your class, own class, and the add a random are usually at the so original So Babbling class. Book is a mage spell. Yeah, but Lyra is, is an exception, so it's... So there's no standardization, and you just got to memorize more. Yeah, pretty much, pretty much. Well, Flame Geyser's not bad. It allows for a clear on Medivh's valet with the dagger hit. Yeah, I mean, Theo has the board. I guess the 4-4 Edwin was, was a great call for him. Doomsday Frost Nova is now an option for Legolas. Rogues tend to be okay at removing the Doomsayer, but not with this hand. Glyph of Sap. Yeah, is this board even that valuable to you? If you're if you're Theo? Yeah. Because I think if you're if you're Legolas, you want to get rid of it, but no, I, I mean, guess if Ping you're, does. If you're Theo, I I think you're okay with this getting removed. It's Excuse yeah. me. It's a board that's done its job, and the Shimmering Tempest honestly is more valuable dead than alive. Yeah, okay. really valuable dead. Alright, how much value can Theo pick up from this mage deck? Whew. And what is the place? Is is this the Cabalist Tome turn? Ideally, you Tome on a turn when your opponent doesn't have much on board. I don't like it, though, because you're not... I what feel else like... can you really develop? It's like this, or you don't want to flame Elemental Vile Spine because there's probably going to be Medivh and Alexstrasza. What about Mimic Doomsayer. Pod? Because it still leaves you three mana to do something. Maybe you draw into... I, I don't even know. I mean, Thinking about it, I don't even know. first go from there. Okay, the more it's we're all discussing... It's just a bunch of what-ifs. The more we're discussing this turn, the more I prefer the Cabalist Tome. Because you're right, just all of the other plays you, seem you, weak. You Tome and then you have nine cards. Okay, final suggestion. Flame Elemental into Valspine Slayer. It's a weak kill. That's what I was thinking. But at least... Valspine is, is valuable for Alex and Medivh. Uh, so I... I don't know. Can I actually pick a this little team? <laughs> If we're playing a value game, then sure, why not? Just go for it. Playing a value game, you're going to own now. Now, Cold Blood makes more sense. Shadow Step doesn't do anything except activate the Fast Point Slayer again, I guess. Having to Cold Blood and trade this? Ouch. You're sort of net zero because you got an additional Cold Blood off of Primordial Glyph, so sacrificing one is okay. And I, I do like that he went with the one that cost one mana and was of course. assumed to already be in the deck mm -hmm. instead of the one that he generated. And Cold Blood is now free after Gadget's Land Auctioneer 2, which is just an extra little advantage that you can play that, draw an extra card at no, at, at no cost. Perhaps. Now Legolas, it's his turn to start putting things on the board, and he has nothing to put on the board. He could Doomsayer here to set up for a, a Firelands Portal next turn. Or you could just do nothing and Firelands Portal a minion. Yeah. The end is Looks like he's doing it. Just trying to trying to do whatever he possibly can to put something on the board and have it stick. And it looks like the Firelands Portal minion is what he's going to go for. 
Valspire and Slayer must be tempting now, though. Because you got I mean, two. You, do you need both? Do you really need two? Do you even need to do anything this turn? Besides, like, hit and re-dagger? You could even play the Phantom Knives. They're not going to yeah, be that useful could. in this so matchup. You could cycle. Options. I don't know, maybe it's my arena perspective, but Valspine Slayer is, is like the number one card for Rogue in arena, and you, you want to get as much value out of this as possible. And I know there's not a lot of value that you can get from it in this matchup, but we saw Medivh. There's oh, going man. to be Alex Straza. There's more difficult minions to remove, and this Doomsayer, yes, will give initiative to Legolas, but you haven't seen any other minion development up until now. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's unlikely that something really strong comes down behind this, unless... He does have coin. Coin Medivh could be a possibility. Okay. <laughs> Gotta say, that was a terrible, terrible Cabal this time. Oh, yeah, that's bad. Polymorph is okay, I guess. Flame Geyser is two damage. Freezing Potion is oh. a freezing potion. Okay, well, you called it. <laughs> you said the, the Brazil are coining up Medivh this turn, or at least that's what Netherlands are playing around. There it is. Good. Into the Fireland Sport the next turn. This is. This is very strong turn of events for Legolas. Look, a third cold blood. Why not? Okay, so... Well, you just get rid of it with Vilespine Slayer, right? Yeah, you, you can to... fan Vilespine or you can Flame Geyser Vilespine. Yeah, I guess you fan. I guess I guess that's the better one. And now you have Gadgets in with Freezing Potion, two cold bloods, Flame Geyser, you can draw pretty much your entire deck. Do up. you do you play gadgets on now, or are you too afraid of the potential of a violence portal because Medivh? Oh, I'm not there. playing gadgets on now. No, no, I'm killing this Medivh. I was thinking gadgets on, and then you could freeze it. Uh, yeah, yeah, I suppose. Oh, there's the flower, which Theo seems to want to play now, but he can't. Yeah. Play shares and alongside a polymorph next turn. Oh my goodness, everything coming up Legolas's way. No need to play the violence bottle on the face. That's Alexstrasza's job later. Lotus Agents in Corhound, not the worst result. Theo probably starting to sweat a little bit there. Ah, look at all the resources. Ten cards in hand, plenty of removal. Brazil. Just looking so strong. So do you think it's Polymorph, Valspine, Slayer this turn? That seems to be the clearest way of removing everything. Hmm. Then you can just dagger away the 1-1. One, one. Job done. Uh, That's I, the easiest. I guess Flame Geyser, SI7 Agent is also an option. Then Polymorph, the 9-5. Uh, mm -hmm. the a lot of ways Theo can do this. It's going to be two more minions coming from Atiash. Maybe you'd rather have Vile Spine for one of those that you couldn't kill with Flame Geyser yeah. and SI7. I think I, I really prefer the Vile Spine Slayer turn this turn from the others that I described. But no, Theo's found a way to play Sharazen. You're going to play that with the Vile Spine. You're going to freeze. freeze the 5 3. Okay, sure. Probably a little bit frustrating to use that before Gadgets and Auctioneer, but this is a decent board that Theo's coming up with as a result. Problem is, Alex Straza, I imagine, is going to come down pretty quick here. Damage on the Rogue is pretty much permanent. A couple of fireballs, and this game could be over very quickly. Yeah, there aren't any fireballs in Brazil's hand yet. There's just the Frostbolt at the moment. So if Netherlands can put a stop to these huge minions that are staring them down, then there is still a chance here. And they could do it. done relatively easy. Yeah. I got the best deals anywhere. Hmm. Ooh. Good draw. Uh, hmm. I'm wondering, wouldn't it have been better to trade Sharaz and into the 5-3? In which case, doing that first is, is correct. Could you have revived it then? You uh, didn't, Gadgetan, you didn't know that you were going to be drawing the counterfeit coin. Gadgetan, Polymorph. Okay, true. You would have had the cold blip. That's only three out of four. So I guess... Okay. In this case, you'd rather just trade the Vile Spine and... Push as much and damage as possible. As in. That's a prep too. Really.
Firefly in this miracle rook. Earth preps. Too bad. You no. can prep flame geyser. Oh if you want to save vile spine. Too bad no Edwin yeah, can come down this turn. No, he doesn't have time. Could have prepped flame geyser, but traded the vile spine instead. That's all fine. Like I don't mind saving the second prep for the second Gadgetan auctioneer. Then again, there are only seven cards left in in Theo's deck. Thanos with the Blizzard and maybe the Frostbolt too this turn. You can just ping. Oh, you just ping away the auctioneer, of course. And you get a six drop. Ah, it's a good six drop. It's not bad. Is there a way to deal with it? No. Are you? Oh. Do you really even care if this gadget thing keeps drawing? Theo's at seven cards. Is fatigue ever on your mind? Yeah, it is. It definitely is. I'm just trying to work out ways that Theo can deal with the 6-6. Six -six. It looks like Thanos, Fan of Knives, SO7 Agent, Flame Geyser would do the job. Don't think that deals with the 2-3, though. Ah, Viscerate might help. Mm. Thanos, Viscerate, fan, fan of Knives, Flame Geyser. Yeah, okay, that does it. That clears board. But then you draw... One, One more two, cards. Three, three, three more cards. Three more cards. Four more cards because you fan of knives and you draw for that too. Four more cards. Yeah, of course. And then you draw at the beginning of your turn, so you're left with one more card. Ah, that's not what you want to be against, Mage. Yeah, not killing the, the gadgets in there was, was very smart. Maybe Theo has to SX7 agent his own gadgets and auctioneer. Ooh. But then he's not dealing with the 6-6. Six, six. Oh, preparation! There's backstab. That's unfortunate. Can't now backstab the 6-6. Six, six. Mm. You could have... Mm. Hallucination as well? It's gonna draw... And we've had, we've had Edwin already. Edwin was played as a 4-4 four -four way back yeah. on turn 2 or turn 3. Questing, that's what he's been looking for. I think that's and ice enough. block. Instant pickup, but the ice block does nothing wow. when you've run out of cards. I'm almost out of cards. But he is, he's gonna fatigue. I'm out of oh boy. That's I was... Nine damage, 10 damage, 11, 12, 13 damage with the weapon too. Well, uh, Netherlands just can't win. There's no Eater of Secrets, so they just mm -hmm. can't win this game. <laughs> that was oh. right. I actually thought that Add insult to injury. I thought it was going to get damaged right after that. I actually thought that Brazil were going to use the ATS just to smack the face, just mm -hmm. to deal that little bit of extra damage. But nope. Okay, grab four seven. That works too. I mean, they get one fatigue and then they get two fatigue. Block gets popped this turn by Netherlands, but then Brazil has an additional block. You can even just frost Nova. Never mind. Block's not getting popped. Could Netherlands have weathered the storm if they had killed their own gadgets in? I actually forgot there was a Thanos there too. I'm pretty certain Brazil could have actually had lethal that turn. Fireball, Frostbolt, ping, ATS charge. If you ping the Thanos. If you ATS would've... charge first. Yeah, of course. Fireball, Frostbolt is 11. Yeah, and then you 12, ping, 13. ping the Thanos. So and then that 14 is the. Oh, you, oh, yeah, you ping the yeah, yeah, so, so that's that two extra go. damage. Oh, yeah, yeah. So that would have been lethal. Hey, cast a lethal. God, I hope it's right. <laughs> wait, there was a Thalnos on another one's board? Yeah. Oh, wait, no, no, no. Why did they draw? Ah, uh, I was, okay. Never mind. This guy's <laughs> wait, what? Circle so Ice. It wasn't the Thalnos on. <laughs> Miracle Rogue versus Freeze Mage. Oh, man. Sorry, Twitch chat. Castle Lethal is as good as Twitch chat Lethal. I mean, I honestly, I, I must have blacked out a second there. I, it's been a complicated game. It's like, what? Miracle Rogue versus... It's like 10 a.m. Versus Freeze Mage. Chicago. I, oh, really? Yeah, I don't know what happened there. There was a Thalnos. Yeah, but it was on the other side of the board. Not, not the side that I was talking about. <laughs> Anywho, doesn't matter. Like we said before, it's impossible for Netherlands to win this game. Brazil get their second win. 
Netherlands is one game away from being kicked out of the Hearthstone Global Games. <laughs> Make that sound so bad. I did. I kicked didn't, out. Didn't mean it like Pick that. Gone. Expelled. <laughs> Expelled. <laughs> Legolas feeling pretty good about that one. The fate of Brazil now lie with who's up next? Loxodontis. Mm -hmm. Yep. It's uh, that was a weird game. I'm not gonna lie. I I am not a rogue player by any means. I I am not. But drawing out your deck there, I'm not positive what he was looking for right. to try and win that game. It was difficult. There were a lot of, of hard choices there. I think there was a, an opportunity to SI7 his own auctioneer at mm -hmm. some point, but that maybe meant that he wouldn't have been able to deal with his opponent's minions. It's yeah. tricky. Let's take a look at the next game. Legolas versus Tyler. Sorry, Loxodontis versus Tyler. Shaman. Just a Legolas fanboy. I am. I called Kukura Legolas early. Now I'm calling Loxodontis. Everybody's Legolas. Legolas. <laughs> Everybody's Legolas. And uh, this looks like it's going to be a more regular game. One that we... Um, one that we expect. A little bit more straightforward, whether uh, it's an aggressive or a more control shaman build or an aggressive or a more control warrior build. Um, there's not a ton of variation here with these decks. So Loxodont is on the left, Tyler on the right. I'm sure a lot of you uh, recognize Tyler's room. He is, of course, uh, one of the most dedicated streamers out there. Streams insane hours, plays this game more than just about anybody. Yeah, he plays, he often, you know, he plays 12 hours a day, and whereas a lot of streamers would make a big deal out of that, you know, yeah, 12 hour stream. For Tyler, it's just another day for him. Just another stream. And then some days he'll just go, ah, oh, do you know what? I feel like going for 24 hours today, and he'll just do it. That's, that's insane. That After guy, like four hours, I'm like, I'm hungry. And the, the terrifying I thing is. I want to go outside. The like, terrifying thing is, he keeps playing as good as well. Like, he doesn't get, his gameplay doesn't get worse. Well, that's the thing. When you play for such long durations of time without stopping so regularly, like, you don't get tilted. You must trick your body into not being fatigued. That's got to be a huge advantage in, in open cups, in, in long right. tournaments, in invitationals, things like that. Well, it depends. If he starts this open cup 16 hours into his stream, then maybe it's not uh, as much of an true, advantage. True, true. Uh, oh, Volcano from Loxodontis. What is going on here? The second non-evolved shaman deck of the day. How does that line up? This against the Warrior. Taunt Warrior. Uh, Spirit Echo can, we actually saw it take a win versus Taunt Warrior earlier today, so we're going to be seeing maybe that same it matchup. Was, it was able to play very aggressively. Yes. The Warrior wasn't able to deal with the resources quickly enough. Uh, it was a close game, though. It was, but if you can get a, a very valuable Spirit Echo, um, whether a couple of, of Brawls or a Primordial Drake sleep with the fishes and still have enough development, then the Shaman is really fantastic at developing a large board state after even the warrior has completed the quest. Um, essentially nullifying the rag shots every turn. Oh. Oh, it's Nazoth. Oh. Well, of all the different types of shaman I thought we'd see over the next few, few weeks because of the changes, Nazoth isn't one of them. And that hand certainly isn't, uh, isn't going to do it. Tyler going to have plenty of time to complete his quest this game. Then the difficulty is going to be with Brazil and, and trying to hang on as that Ragnaros hero power is dealing eight damage every single turn. I wonder if this is some ancestral spirit shaman build. You would almost expect it, right? With with Cairn, you would expect ancestral spirits, sure. maybe earth elementals. I, white eyes. Yeah, I expect to see white eyes for certain. Uh, Stonehill Defender, again, very good in this mm -hmm. type of deck. It's good for grabbing oh, things from below. And more white eyes if you want to play a fatigue game. Okay, Brazil saw the Armorsmith and they looked very happy. I, I'm not sure. They may, that may just be something they said to each, or to each other. Like They already knew it was a Quest Warrior. I mean, if this, if this is a Ooh. heavy Nazoth control deck, it is built to out control control decks. Uh huh. But then... Taunt Warrior is just not a traditional control deck. It's not. Taunt Warrior is very good at, uh, well, beating anything once it gets that, that hero power done and it's, ready and down. And It's almost more of a, a mid-range style build. Mm -hmm. And then it it gives you an ultimatum as soon as the quest is complete. If it can afford yep. to play it without dying, a damage per turn ends the game quickly. You can't really outlast a deck that has eight damage every turn for free, which is the problem that, that Brazil... I always say Kuglora, then what's wrong with me? 
that Brazil are going to have it's to face. It's only two players on Brazil. It's Kaglorin and it's Legolas. <laughs> that Loxodontus is going to have to face. I love the, I love their names. I They're like, all kind of similar. Yeah. Well, but that's great. I can I mean, use that a lot of them to start with L. Yeah. Jade Lightning. Uh. Do you just go directly to the Armor Smith? That's what I'm thinking. Go straight to Armor Smith. Do you not pass Tar Creeper. <laughs> do not collect $200. Well, you can you can get rid of the Tar Creeper. You can make the trade and do that. Yeah. It does mean you're giving the Warrior armor, but. Do you care about how much warrior you're giving, how much armor you're giving the warrior in this matchup? Probably not. No. I don't think it's particularly relevant. You're not going to kill him early anyway. You're going to run him out of resources, kill him late. After they've used brawl, you're going to Nizoth. Hero power is going to hit your death rattles, which will spawn more creatures, and then you'll hit him heavy. Right. Looks like. Luxodontus is going to devolve this board, though. It's a pretty good board to devolve, actually. You've got so much removal. A lot of stats just got wiped from the board there. You've got another devolve, two Maelstrom portals, two volcanoes, probably we'll lightning storms. Now, yeah. Like, get them out of the way while you can. You can argue that devolve is one of the better ones, though. Devolve hits an Ali Armorsmith. Devolve hits a Direhorn Hatchling. It does some serious stuff to it. Tyler is able to play Bloodhoof Brave now. The first proper minion. Actual minion with stats he can put on the board. Proper. Minion that can attack. You know. Uh, Tar Creeper was a 1-5. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly my point. <laughs> no, don't hit your face. <laughs> That's not where it goes. That's not what happened. Do you think he just decided then that he didn't want to play it and thought, okay, I'll pretend it's Junior Water Speaker. And then... <laughs> I, anything's possible. Top minions are building up quickly for Netherlands. Some additional generation with the Stone Hill means that this quest may be completed. That's three, that's uh, four, that's Sooner five. than normal, even. That's, yeah, I mean, if you count the extra taunt from the Stone Hill Defender, that's six taunts ready to go in hand. Sure, you have to wait for turn eight for the Primordial Drake. But Tyler's going to get there, and it's not going to take him long. That's three. Really. Unfortunately, we don't see what the discovers are, but we'll hopefully take a look at those in just a moment. Not a snap pick for Tyler. What do you think he's looking for here? What's ideal? I think he's looking at three underwhelming taunts, but you definitely want Ali Armor Smith or Direhorn Hatch or uh, Hatchling. Ah. Those yep. are three underwhelming taunts. Yeah. You're looking for the class specific taunts. Ornery Direhorn, Ornery. unfortunately, <sighs> isn't the one that you want. It's okay though. It's it's the it's the best of a bad bunch, I guess. Yeah. The uh, the way that I like to look at that. Even Curator is really good. Sure. Second copy of Curator doesn't hurt. No, of course. More card draw. But Ornery Direhorn, it's it's okay. It's B tier. There's the Junior Water Speaker. Okay, so I feel as though Brazil just drop can here. It's well started to deal with Stonehill Defenders. And Netherlands are just not going to be able to clear it. They could brawl if they wanted to, but that one doesn't clear it either. It looks like a bit of a weak brawl. In fact, Tyler is now going to realize that this is an Azoth Shaman, and he's going to want to hold onto that brawl with everything he's got. I mean, talk about a surprise pick for Brazil with this Shaman build. I guarantee this is not what Tyler was expecting. Ty um, Tyler, uh, well... Netherlands and Tyler specifically have had some funny matchups in the past. Is this what? Well, no, and this is after, didn't you say that Tyler said that Brazil has patterns and yeah. that they're predictable? Yeah, yeah, right, right. Well, here you go. <laughs> A few weeks ago, uh, Dione played the Tempo Hemet Warrior against, I think it was Tyler. Oh, so he, he gets. <laughs> Tyler he gets, gets these all weird the weird matchups. Match I, must choose. I believe that was against Tyler. It's definitely against Netherlands. So they're, they're kind of going to be a little bit used to playing against things they're not expecting. Though this Shaman deck isn't completely unheard of. No, it's not completely unheard of. It's just... It's been most popular during the Wild Heroic Brawl recently. Right. It was like 
top, top tier in that. And then people were like, well, maybe th maybe this can work in standard. And then shortly after that, they were like, nope. Not a fan. <laughs> no, uh, no Halazeals, no elemental destructions. Three out of ten. Right. <laughs> but Brazil said three out of ten. I can make that a six. Sure. And it's working out for them at the moment. If you get the matchup you want, which this is certainly not a bad matchup. Warrior needs a decent amount of time to get going, and you need a decent amount of time to actually kill people. Another Rathion. No Dragon Drawn, though. One day it'll happen, Rathion. Ultimately, drawing one card for Loxodontus wasn't too bad there at all. And White Eyes. White Eyes is great. White Eyes is pretty good in this deck. Netherlands picks up another Stonehill Defender. So Tyler, he is actually going to be able to complete the quest very, very soon. If he plays Stonehill Defender now, what gets another cheap know? taunt that he can play this turn. There you go, four out of seven. Plays another cheap taunt he can get down this turn. Drake next turn, that'll do it. That would mm -hmm. just complete the quest. Yep. So we're almost there. Gonna, gonna start by drawing an extra card with the Acolyte, though. You do want to get the quest online as quickly as possible in this matchup. You're not worried about damage being pushed from the Shaman until after many death rattles have been killed and a larger board presence is, you know, put out from Nizoth. So the sooner you can activate Sulfurous, deal eight damage per turn, you want to end this game very quickly. Uh -huh. These aren't the cheap taunts that taunts maybe... Are made of. Yeah. <laughs> but These aren't the shield bearers of no, not quick quite. quests. Not quite able to be able to squeeze that in this turn. In fact, now it looks like Tyler won't be able to complete the quest and play the Sulfuros for another two turns. There's a second Devolve from Loxodontis. It's not bad against this board, actually. Denying the Acolyte of Pain, more card draw. It might buff the Stonehill Defender, though. That's kind of a problem. Well, not buff it, but it, it won't change that much. One four, a pretty yeah, bad stat. Yeah, the stat line could actually be improved on a two drop. The only reason I'm, I, I think it is tempting is because of that acolyte. You get three, two, or you get four two drops. This is the second devolve, though, so this is, is. something you really want to think carefully about. What to could do? get a doomsayer. Four two drops. You could deal with that, though. Yeah, that's true. You could just kill this and then devolve. That may be wise. Because it's it's very likely that the two drop has more attack. Yep, that's what Brazil go for. Lord Walker Joe. Uh, that's a good thing, right? Yes, it's uh -huh. a very good thing. Then again, the first thing that Loxodontus did then was hover over. He's actually going to trade. I mean, do you want to kill it or do you not want to kill it? I think you just leave it alive. You try and just stop the not warrior hurting you. From playing spells. You're not playing anything. You can kill it whenever you feel like. Yeah, I mean, Loxodontus doesn't have any spells he's going to play anytime soon in his hand. Mm -hmm. His volcanoes are just going to just keep on erupting there with their beautiful golden animations. It's a shame we're not on uh, the Un'Goro. Yeah, I was thinking the same thing. I know the production here love to set up the more volcano. volcanoes. There's Mouse Guy that likes to uh, do his thing. There's White Eyes, in case you haven't seen the card in a while, came out with Mean Streets of Gadgetsan. When it dies, it goes back into the deck as a 5-mana 10-10. And if you then play Nazoth, it comes back and then shuffles itself into the deck again as a 5-mana 10-10. It's a powerhouse if you play it in the right circumstances. And it takes a pretty special deck, but uh, this is definitely it. <laughs> this is definitely a pretty special deck. This is a deck. very special deck. <laughs> <laughs> I must choose. Very clunky deck can get caught with hands that are super reactive, only AoE spells, and you can put on absolutely no pressure. But all things considered, the Shaman's putting on some, some good pressure for this. So yeah, the works going straight into the minion there makes a lot of sense. Loxodontis is now picking up Stonehold Defender. Can I play it straight away? Maybe hoping for another Wide Eyes, maybe hoping for a thing from below. But the more Wide Eyes, the merrier in a Nizop deck. Ooh, Earth Elemental's fine, I guess. Sunwalker's okay, too. Sunwalker's actually really good. Um, Post-quest completion and Sulfurous activation, Divine yeah. Shield can soak up eight damage. That's true. Osrock is never the answer, guys. 
<laughs> Sokka's never... Well, I don't know. If you happen to have a lot of fireflies lying around, then maybe... Just casually create a 920. Not even one. A 520, I mean. No mana 520. Don't even Osrock one time. Okay. <laughs> Poor Osrock. What did he ever do to you? He's wronged me. <laughs> so horribly. I, I, won't, I won't ask any more questions about that. <laughs> time. One word. Silence. <laughs> okay, I understand. <laughs> I understand everything now. I, I guess Lux Nonsense, yeah, you can just drop these some Walker on curve. It is so very strong for after the, the quest completion, as you said, but in this case, it looks like Lux Nonsense is just trying to apply so much pressure that Tyler has to brawl. And then he gets a brawl. <laughs> then he gets a brawl, but then also the brawl is gone, and then when Azoth happens later, there is hopefully no brawl to deal with that one. Thing is, still 17 cards left in the deck. You can't play an Azoth unless you get the Azoth. Yeah. That's and true. we haven't seen any cycle mechanics yet for Brazil. I'm assuming there's mana tied totems. We see the Blood Mage in hand, but there is a reality where Azoth is like one of your last five cards, and you just don't find it. And that is one problem with White Eyes as well. It actually, because it shuffles an extra card into the deck, it possibly pushes Nazoth back the way it works. Um, Diehorn Hatchling can do the same thing. There are Nazoth Warrior decks which have been played around or tested recently. Mm -hmm. Some players have done quite well with it. It's a fun deck. With Sudden Genesis doing some uh, <laughs> disgusting things. <laughs> I love it when um, lesser played cards are made viable. Yeah. Journey to Angoro has been really great for that. It has. Moonwalker Cho is hanging in there as Tyler does a great job of clearing up this board without playing the Brawl. Yeah, fantastic turn for Tyler. Oh, this is fine for Loxodontus, except he's going to have to give Tyler a J Lightning. J Claws to get rid of the 5 2, great. J Lightning plus trade to get rid of the 4 8, great. You get some J Golems, awesome. <laughs> but the Would you rather me. give them a volcano? Ooh. 8, 10, 12, 15. Exactly. Volcano clears everything. <sighs> I, gu I guess. Should have killed the Cho when you had the chance. Play the volcano first, then play Jade Claws and Thalnos, maybe, to get through that deck. I think you definitely want a Thalnos. Hey, no, it looks like he may be giving the warrior a Jade Lightning instead. He can just leave the Primordial Drake there as well. Okay. You don't have to play a spell this turn. Nope. Do you know what a speaker going to come down instead? Make it difficult for the Drake to trade into Bane Blood. Okay. The impact that Law Show is having on this game. It's pretty funny. It's something that we don't see very often now that there's no Pilot of Shadow and haven't seen for a long time, but... It's changing the course of play significantly. Battle Rage would be great here. Yeah. For Brazil. <laughs> <laughs> Gotta admit, Primordial Drake looks pretty great here for Tyler. Just wiping out everything except the Junior Water Speaker. You do lose your own Law Show too, but that means that you can then coin out Sophurus. Mm-hmm. I think that's just the play. Trade, Primordial Drake, go face with the Sophurus. Start to actually win the game. Yeah. You had to turn the corner eventually. There's Nazoth. Brawl still in hand for Netherlands, and Brazil has to know that. So what are we what are we thinking? We're thinking a Thanos, a White Eyes, and a Karen. And a Cairn. Totally blanked the Cairn for a moment there. Whoops. Lux of Dantas wasn't able to play it this turn anyway because of Overload. So that's fine. I think there are any actual other Death Rattles in the deck. There may not be. Again, th I think there's a second... Wait, is there a second Stone of Defender or do you use both? I think there's a second one somewhere which could get another White Eyes. I, I would expect Ancestral Spirit, but I, I don't know now. Uh, I definitely expect uh, Spirit Echoes. Mmm, Spirit Echo, yeah. Which maybe Loxodontus would like to pick up before he plays Nazoth, in the hopes that he can then Spirit Echo that board. I think they have Farsight. Oh, maybe. I don't honestly I'll know. Imagine that. 
next draw is far sight, you get spirit echoes from it, then the following turn you can just play Nozoth and Oh, that would be huge. It's a lot of conditions. Yeah, I, I just said if a lot yeah. of times in that sentence. <laughs> That'd be cool though. So now Tyler has significantly uh, a resource advantage. More pressure to apply. Can start dealing eight damage per turn, every turn, this turn. Yeah, it begins 50-50. Are we are we hitting a one-one or are we hitting a uh, <laughs> are we hitting eight damage to the face? We are hitting the one-one. All right, Oof. all right. Good job, Alvin Super Archer. Super dead, Alvin Archer. <laughs> Did your duty. <laughs> Can't ask any more of you than that. And the Zoth's gonna come straight down. And as you said, brawl is still a thing. Uh, White Eyes makes it slightly awkward for the Netherlands. Netherlands can't just trade into Cannon and Brawl. Mm -hmm. I mean, Tyler can actually trade everything. He can trade everything into White Eyes, then get rid of the Cannon, and then Brawl if, if he wants to. I think this is an awkward brawl. You don't want to brawl three away, brawl away three of your own minions. Yeah. It feels a little bit bad. All right, so Bloodhoof into the White Eyes, Primordial into the Cairn. All right, but then there's no reason to. All right. Yeah, you just that works. You can just leave, leave, up. leave Ken alive. Actually, if uh, don't even need any. He wants to AOE. This looks like this looks to me like Brazil's win condition has just just Slipped disappeared. From him. And it's gonna be it's gonna be tough for him to come back from this. Looks to me like we may have our first game five of the day. Yeah, about time too. Two 3 0 sweeps first thing this morning. We've had a couple of 3 1s since then. But this is always going to be a tough series. Brazil have been an outstanding team all the way through the Hearthstone Global Games so far. Netherlands are, are, are made up of so many big names that everyone that's into Hearthstone has heard of, knows about. It's only right that this game goes right down to the bitter end. That's a lot of armor game. It is a lot of armor game. I don't think the Ali Armor Smith even dies, does it? Or maybe it does. Just, just about. That's what happens when you don't count. There's a Storm Guardian, but a little bit late. It's okay. It may eat up two shots from the Ragnaros Hero Power. That's something it does have the potential to do. In fact, the wider Brazil's board gets, well, the sooner Tyler will brawl and then just win. So I just cut that thought just small. There's another Storm Guardian in the deck as well. Oh, there is. You're right. Actually, Luxodontis has a lot of resources now in the hand. It's a good amount of pressure, but one brawl just. Yeah, so he needs it. to find the correct way of baiting out the brawl without wasting too many things. Maybe just one, maybe just the Storm Guardian plus one thing from below is enough here. Maybe that'll do it. Maybe he holds on to the thing, things from below. If there is a. Oh, that the hero power doesn't hit the Storm Guardian. Halazeal. If there is a, a Spirit Echoes in the deck, then Luxodontis is going to want to hit both things from belows with that. Yeah. You're going to want that Mana Tide around as long as possible. I mean, Tyler is running out of pressure other than the Hero Power. Luxodontis can Hero Power every turn. Yeah. I think it just is time for Tyler to pull the trigger, maybe. See what he gets from the slam. We saw both Primordial Drakes, correct? Yep, we did. We did not see the Direhorn Matriarch, however. So Curator would pull the Matriarch, okay. and then... No Malux. <sighs> Tyler's getting... Okay, he's actually... He's low on cards. Oh, he he's... needs this one and three. 
Missed it. The Mana Tide's the second best target, though. Yeah, it's okay. It doesn't impact the next turn at all. That's the only problem. Because the card draw doesn't happen until the end of the next turn. Okay, Loxodontus. Looking in a better position now than he was a couple minutes ago. Four minions drawn really changes things. When that Nazoth was, was just dealt with so easily, it looked like it was game over for him, but not yet. Might have to get a little bit lucky with a couple more 50-50s. Flame Tongue Totem going to come down. It looks like he really is trying to bait out this brawl. And Tyler, look, <laughs> I mean, the do you look even in his put eyes. The second one down? I think that we were a little bit preemptive there in announcing uh, Tyler's victory in this game. Well, I mean, I, I think Tyler's still in a fine position because he. <laughs> he doesn't has look. He doesn't look like he is. He looks stressed as all hell, but I think he still has a second brawl in the deck, right? So. Yeah. There's a solid chance that this game goes to okay. fatigue, actually. Could happen if we end up with Drag Hero Power just hitting a totem every turn later. Yeah, in which case Tyler's not going to want to use the Curator to draw. And he's still going to be one one draw ahead of Brazil. Uh, okay. Both of these decks have shuffled extra cards into the deck. Uh -huh. So there's there's one more Storm Guardian still for Loxodontus. Mm -hmm. And there's... You know, Diehorn Matriarchs for Tyler. Right. So overpowered, understated minion, or undercosted minion. Yep. So does Tyler try and deal with the Storm Guardian one more time with the hero power? Because if he does, then I guess the play is just weapon into the Taunt Totem and then hope to win the one and three this time. If it fails, we just stick up the Alley Armor Smith. I think that might be, uh, might be the way he has to go. Unless he wants to take a one and four and not even hit his weapon in, but that just that just oh, seems worse. You could also tank twelve damage and sleep with the fishes. Ooh, uh, you're right. It's not something I'd considered. You're right. I don't know that I'd advise it. Tanking twelve damage? No, I have to admit I'm never a fan of that. Ah, that's a miss too. Oh, Jinyu as well. The Storm Guardian is now killed. Two minions, and it's still kicking. Yep, and it's going to kill some more at this rate. Tyler, of course, still has the chance to hit it with the hero power, but it's just not happening. That hero power has just it's got a magnet stuck to some totems. That's taunt warrior for you. These games end up going very long because a lot of the time you just don't get the rolls that you need. Maybe now Tyler has to play the brawl. I think that's what Loxodonis just keeps saying. Well, maybe now he has to brawl. Yeah, and then afterwards he maybe just says... Maybe if I expend one more resource, yeah. he has to brawl. And afterwards he just says, here are my thing, things from below. Things from below? Things from belows? I think it's things from below. Things from below. It sounds right to me. Well, Harrison can't be played with the Jade Clauses up because you don't want don't to get cards. that much further into your deck than your opponent. Already down to six cards. Brazil still have eight cards left in their deck. Putting Tyler down to five cards left is risky. He's going to go for it, though. He feels as though he needs another resource. Maybe an execute is what he's looking for. He gets the second, second brawl. brawl. Maybe he, now he feels like he can pull the trigger on the first one. I have the feeling this turn he just hero powers again. He's been very consistent in that game plan. It hasn't been working for him yet. I don't know if he even swings the weapon, though. He just hero powers, and the next turn he can play the brawl. Still got 33 health remaining, Tyler, so not under any immediate threat just yet. There's not much burst in this Nazoth Shaman deck. At least you don't expect there to be. Just went face. There's oh, the Oh, there actor. it is. Wow. Ah, that's a good. Oh, yes, my that's a good. That is a good. Holy, that's a good. Just drop both things from below. Drop Halazeal because why not? Do you ever overdraw? Uh, well, if you. The more minions you play. Yeah, it does it. You're emptying them from your hand anyway, does so. Doesn't matter. Hole. You definitely don't 
totem, but you no. can't totem if you want to play Halazil and the Spirit Echo anyway. And then this will surely draw out a brawl. Well, well he can play he can play the Flame Song totem. Can... Oh no no. no Not if you want Halazil and Spirit Echo. The overload, yeah. And maybe you don't need to Halazil and Spirit Echo. What's he doing here? I think you want Spirit Echo on that Storm Guardian. 100%. Okay, so I'm wondering... Oh, okay, now he's going to do it. I was wondering for a second if he was just trying to bait out the Brawl first, then play the thing from below, and the Spirit Echo, and then let the second Brawl take them out yeah, the first yeah, time, yeah. and then replay them a third time. This is, but this is just such a yeah. payoff. I mean, this is what Brazil has been waiting for this entire game. I cannot believe this is happening. It took until the bottom eight cards of their deck to be able to find the Spirit Echo, but now that they have it... And the oh Storm Guardian God. survives again, right? It's okay, the hero power can still take this out. <laughs> Calm down, Tyler. Don't, don't... But will it? Don't tilt. But will it? Come on. If it goes face, then he's about to win the game. <laughs> oh, my... Well, he's not because of the Jinyu. And the Halazeal. Oh and my. And the Halazeal with the volcano. These these are some of just the unluckiest rag shots I have ever seen. <laughs> Look at Loxodonta's face right now. He's laughing, he's smiling, he's having a great time. I don't think either of these players know like, what to think. My Storm Guardian is impervious to rag. I've got the answer to it. I've he got a killed. <laughs> Jinyu just gonna quickly put Loxodontus back up to 14 health. Way out of range of that one of that one rag hero power, but if the next two go face from Tyler, yes, then that <laughs> it can actually still end that way. And that sort of seems like that's where this is going. It's likely because there's a second brawl in the hand, which can force maybe the second one to go face. Mm -hmm. It just needs to try and and... one more from there, and you, I mean, Loxodonis can Halazil Volcano if he absolutely has to kill for 15. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's and true. And then play two thing from below is behind that. Loxodonis is going to hold off these things from below, so they're going to hold off things from below. It's hard to say the plural of that card. It kind of is. It's definitely things, but I don't know why it's it's not as in... Hold on to the things. Not he's going to he's gonna hold on to the yes, things. Hold on to all the things that come from below. And wait for the second rule before he plays those. Sto sure, play the Stone Claw Totem. No harm in that. Oh, execute. So he can finally take out the... Yeah. Now, Tyler, if he brawls, he knows exactly what's left in Loxodontus' hand. The only card he doesn't know about is the Hex, and I guess the Volcano, if he doesn't already have a read on mm -hmm. that. So, does he want... Oh, he doesn't know about the Halazeal either, does he? No, he does not. Yeah. It wasn't played with the Spirit Echo. So, does he want to just allow Brazil to play both things from below his next turn? Things from below <laughs> next turn. I'm not going to fault you for it. It's hard. <laughs> Yeah, gonna do it. Good. Gonna just try and get the rag shot in right now. Oh! Storm Guardian finally dies. For, for now, temporarily. There's still another one in the deck. Yeah, and one in the hand. Yep. You know, one in the hand is worth a bunch of rag shots. So one more rag shot to the face for Tyler. This game's actually over. But if um, Brazil can't actually play Halazeal plus Volcano this turn because of the Overload. No, they can't. So this this actually is just going to be a percentage victory Lux for Tyler here. Luxodontis has to go as wide as he possibly can. Totem, both things from below. The Storm Guardian. After all this, all the stress, all the rag hits, it's, it's going to literally come down to... A rag hit. A rag hit. <laughs> <laughs> so you can Storm Guardian, Jade Claws, double thing from below, hero yep. power. Yep. If you, think, if you Jade Claws, that means that you can't Hell is your Volcano next turn either, but you just win at that point. So it doesn't really matter. Yeah, we put in, what, five minions on the board here? So one in six for Tyler. Oh, God. I don't want to be Netherlands right now. Not even a little bit. Uh, wait, what if what if they were to draw a Ravaging Ghoul? They've got double sleep with the fishes. 
Yeah, that, well would, that would actually just be game, wouldn't it? Or a whirlwind. Do they have any left? I, got, on, I don't know. I think they do. I think they have a whirlwind left at least. Nah, <sighs> I don't know. That's not it. Oh my goodness. Yeah, Revenge, Double Sleep with the Fishes would have dealt with everything except the Storm Guardian. Yeah. Then Execute would have finished off the Storm Guardian. Hero Power Gun. If they Dire Horn, Ellie Armor Armorsmith, can they survive? From what they know. Oh. Dire Horn comes down, what? Storm Guardian goes in, Ellie Armor Smith goes down, Jade Claws plus Thing from Below goes in, you gain. <sighs> Four? No, he's. This is the. This is it. This is oh, the end of the game. No, it's. I can't watch. I have an axe uh, is this gonna go to game uh, five, or is Tyler about to whiff and have Loxodontus take it away? Oh my God! It oh! hits! It hits! He actually got it! Tyler <laughs> gets the win against Loxodontus. We are going straight to game five. <laughs> Netherlands are still very much in the Hearthstone Global Games oh right now. Oh my God! Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I can hear production laughing in the background. I can't blame him. Oh my god! That was that was a one in six. Yeah, that yeah, yeah, it was. <laughs> Oh. Noxodon just did everything he could to survive that. He went as wide as he could. Unfortunately, because of the overload the turn before, he couldn't play Halazeal plus Volcano. Tyler won an under 20% chance to... But after losing, God knows how many of those rag flips to hit that oh, yeah. Swarm Guardian. Yeah, yeah. So it's, it's, it's Like not... countless rag flips. He was due for some actual luck there. Yeah, you can and easily was, watch this. That was just flipping luck. You can man. easily watch oh, this and man. say to yourself, oh, Tyler's so lucky, but no. Everything because that all... he did up to that point got him to that point, to that one in six chance for a victory, and he got it. That's, I mean, that's being rewarded after playing very patiently. I mean, patiently. Right. Well, I... It was 16% six, according to uh, a voice in our, our friendly in our calculator ear, in the ear. <laughs> Anyways, yeah. if we've uh, had time to just take a breath, I believe there is one more game left in this series. It's going to be Legolas versus Tice. Oh, Druid God. versus Pat. Have we got it in you, Cora? No. <sighs> All right. It's okay. I'm going to pull through. Neither player playing Warlock. Big surprise there. You know what? Fun fact, though. When we called it for Netherlands, we were right. But just like a half hour before it happened. Right. We did. <laughs> okay, well, there's Legolas and Tice. Neither of them... They don't even look flustered. Well, they probably weren't they expecting to, to play this game. Legolas, I imagine, is quite frustrated about this. Yeah, Tice, I, I would think so. Tice has been given one more chance. He won his first game. Legolas won his first game. Which one of them can win a second? I was I was certain that um, for a long part of I that, it was... I was certain that we were going to go to uh, that, that, that Brazil were going to take this. But just think about every intricate detail of that game that led to that point. All of those rag shots that he wanted to hit the Storm Guardian that went face instead. And then finally led to the to the sixteen percent chance that another rag shot would hit face and Tyler would actually be able to win the game. Yeah. I mean, back then, the Nazoth was dealt with. That was, was insane. We said, oh, Tyler's won. That, that's it. Legolas lost his win condition. But then the, the Spirit the bottom Echoes... eight cards had Spirit Echo. He oh. held... He, Loxodon has held both Thing From Below's in hand up until that entire point, knowing that there was a Spirit Echo in his deck and that was going to be the win condition. And he did it. And he executed it perfectly, playing around the brawl with the Storm Guardian that just would not freaking die. And then Tyler played the brawls when he had to, played to survive when he had to, and against all odds, after the calculated play there, won that game. Right. That's Anyways... Like the players, That's, it was amazing. It like was amazing. the players, we now need to try and move on, if it's possible. There is one more equally important game. The winner of more one, important, more important, in fact, is the winner the of this one important. game of Hearthstone. We'll be going through to top eight of the Hearthstone Global Games. The loser is out, and it's starting right I should have worn my Brazil pin. Oh, <laughs> I dropped the ball. Yeah, it's yeah, my fault. Going to be Jade Druid versus. 
some sort of paladin, a slower paladin. Control paladin. As we can see, the adult peacekeeper exactly. Does this run Nazoth? Could this be a continuation of, oh, great, I don't know. of a great game we had at DreamHack, where Zump was able to win with his Nazoth paladin against a Jade Druid? That was actually a really awesome game. It was. That was a really, really good game. Uh, Zump was just he's kind of a breakout from that tournament. A, he was, he was a, a continuation player. of the Nazoth streak here this game, maybe. We'll have to see. Both players. Jay Druid against Control Paladin. Jay Druid is normally going to be okay. heavily favored. Pyromancer, yeah, definitely a Control Paladin. I feel as though um, Netherlands have had the 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 short straw for this entire series, actually. Their matchups have been quite bad. They had the Rogue versus the Mage, which was heavily favored against them. The Hunter versus the Druid, which was pretty Hunter favored. Yeah. That Shaman versus Warrior should have gone to the Shaman. Right. So... It's been, it's been a tough series for Netherlands as far as pick order goes, as far as matchups, all of the preparation that went beforehand. Brazil won that game. They they won the, the pre-game, so to speak. And now they just need to win the last game as well. Ty's going to play aggressively. Never pre-gamed for a game of Hearthstone. <laughs> Sounds exhausting. Yeah. A lot of preparation Wild goes in. Top, very nice. So, we have no idea at the moment if this Paladin deck runs in the Zoth or not. I would, I'd expect it to, but then we've seen that there have been control Paladins that don't run yeah. in Zoth and just kind of those win were, by it lasting. Those were very prevalent during um, EU playoffs yep. this season. Um, just a lot of control Paladins that topped out at Tyrion and Primordial Drake, but they really struggled. They had no win condition. That's where the Nazoth comes in. You need some form of finisher. Right. But you, you bring this Paladin deck because it can do very well against other Paladin decks. Um, it has a lot of options for board clear and stabilization early with Doomsayers against other aggressive decks. I would expect to see some form of healing in here, whether it be Lay on Hands or Forbidden Healing. Hmm. It yeah. just does not do well against Jade Druid. The start's okay, though. Tice has managed to, to get together some sort of tempo-y start against against Brazil, yeah, that you means don't have any minions. No, the, the start's good for Tice. You need to put on as much pressure as possible. Deal damage early on. You need to create a, a mid-range deck out of this control paladin. <laughs> right. Yeah, that's that's what Netherlands is going to try to do. If Tice can uh, can get it so the Spike Ridge Steed can come down on turn six, that would be very helpful. This turn, Tice could play Pyromancer certain hero power, but the problem is, Wasting Pyromancers against a Jay Druid, where you might want to a quality Pyromancer later. There are still ways of getting off a quality. You mm -hmm. can get it off with Consecration. You can get it off with Primordial Drake. Yeah. But if you've got one of the pieces already, granted, you're not going to need to clear the board until much later on. Until the 13-13s and 14-14s. Yeah. Saki Patarim, also very helpful in clearing up Jade's. So really, this turn is just between uh, Wicker Flame and well, Pyromancer. I think Wicker Flame is the easy, because now Pyro can maybe get in for three to six more damage. Yep, it, it protects it. And that's what you need. Hero Power not going to get through that. Yogg Saran, once again, we've seen some uh, seen some interesting yogging today, especially from Ziggentag back in the previous series. Pretty bad Yogg, followed by a pretty good Yogg. That was a fun time. Hmm. Back in the time of Yogg. Well, before it might happen. Ragnaros consumed all of my thoughts. It might happen again in this game. It's the Fire Festival. Ragnaros is allowed to consume your That's thoughts. That's true. That's true. Legolas is looking for minions. He wants to start building the Jade Train uh, the old-fashioned way with Jade Spirit and Jade Behemoth and Aya. Hopefully Nourish is going to help him do that. Well, Jade Behemoth is the perfect pickup for turn six. It's only going to be a 1-1 one, one Jade Golem, though. Brazil have been a little bit slow in their uh, in their jade ramping. Mm. They do have a wealth of resources, however. Big thing that they're going to struggle with is if Spike Ridge Steed comes down 
on this wicker flame. Mm. There's no easy way to get through that. So how does Tice guarantee that the Spider Steed can come down think. next turn? Uh, maybe he has to play Pyromancer and Hero Power, just go as wide as he can to guarantee I'm, it. I'm playing Rallying Blade and Hero Power, and I'm yep. going face. Rallying okay. Blade's going to buff the Wicker Flame for 1-1, one, one actually, because it of is course. Divine Shield. Um, Something very easy to You can hit to in for 6 and put a Hero Power down. Oh, yeah. You've sort of committed to this mm. plan. You can't out-control the, the control deck. You can't do it. So you... It, well, even though the Paladin is kind of more of a control deck than the Jade Druid, Jade is like the control it's, killer. It's the control killer. Yeah. You can't out late game the Jade Druid. Do it this way instead. Rallying Blade and Pyromancer just just create the biggest board you can. Again, Tice wants to guarantee that the Steed comes down next turn. Yeah, Pyro is just more pressure. You don't have a lot of resources, so the resources you do have need to do a lot of work. And Legolas needs to try to stabilize. So a lot of health gain. Uh, 16 from the Feral Rage, gonna be two more Earthen Scales in the deck. Yeah, so he's not going to just lose to this aggressive Control Paladin start. But as we keep saying, the Spike Witch Steed seems to be the, the key here. Mm -hmm. You but can go Tice. Spike Ridge right into Curator. Yeah. To Primordial Drake, if, if Tice can pick up Tyrion. It's a lot of threats, which are very, very difficult for this type of Druid to remove. Probably, Any type of Druid, actually. Probably a Stampeding Kodo from the Primordial Drake as well. No Hydrologist from the Murloc. Yeah. I don't expect to see a Gentle Mega Soul, but I guess it's possible. We haven't seen too much of this deck yet, though we do know it's it's more controlly. Harrison Jones. So does Tice trade in the Pyromancer to prevent the Pyromancer's ability from going off when the Spike Steed gets played? Would we prefer to, to keep the Divine yeah. Shield intact? Then you just want to go face? Mm. Yeah. How much damage you got? The question is, do you put the Steed on the Wicker Flame or do you put it on the Pyromancer? Wicker Flame would become a 5-9, Pyromancer a 5-8. Wicked Flame would have Divine Shield, obviously the Pyromancer. I might run the Rallying Blade into the 2-2. Two -two. Yep. The Wicker, or uh, Pyromancer's effect, excuse me, would kill off the 1-1, one -one and then... And then everything else goes face. That's 6 damage. Hit, hit for... Oh, so, sorry, 6 eight. plus the 2 from the, uh, mm -hmm. from the Spike Witch Steed. Yeah. Sure, do it this way. Doesn't make a difference. As one... Wild Pyromancer. <laughs> <laughs> That's a fact. Eh, Legolas is down to 13. Yeah, Legolas' health is low. This is a not how you expect this matchup to go. Tice has played oh. so aggressively. Importantly, Legolas didn't have the early game disruption. Didn't have Wraths. Had to swipe a board of two minions. So Pyromancer can go face for five. A wicker flame plus weapon go into the three six. I guess that's fine. We'll play just play the curator, see what we pick up. We expect a primordial drake, we expect a stampede kodo, we expect a hydrologist. That's exactly what we get. So we have a pretty good understanding of this deck. We're just not sure if it runs Nazoth yet. The more time goes on, the more I'm expecting it not to. Andrew from Brazil there. Andrew into Nourish into Feral Rage is actually playable this turn. Pyoxaran is playable next turn. Here we go again, Cora. Hi, hi. Jade Idol, Coin. Oh, sorry, Feral Rage, Coin, Jade Idol, because why not? And then you're feeding the Yogmore. Or you could save the Jade Idol and the Coin for Gadget. For Gadget, you could. Probably makes a lot more sense. No? Oh, we're going for a board, okay. Alright. Four four is significant enough that you'd like to get it down. Also, uh if Curator trades in, then Primordial Drake kills off Curator.
Okay. So two silver champion would be fine. Primordial Drake would be fine. Mm. If we're Primordial Draking, how are we making these trades? Because we could trade the Curator into Fandral and then it would survive. Mm -hmm. But then the 2-6 would be destroyed when it trades into the 4-4. I guess you don't even need to trade into the 4-4. Just get rid of Fandral and go face with the 2-6. You could just True Silver. True yeah. Silver Hydrologist. Secret. I wonder. Maybe get away Kodo. Try and get more value from the Curator. Draw Maybe some more a True cards. Silver Harrison. I mean, how, There's, no there's also that. been some significant value already gotten from Fandral. Like, you've seen two Feral Rages, you've seen Jade, and Idol, Nourish. you've seen Nourish. Are you really that worried about Fandral, or do you just continue going face? That's a good point. That's a good point. I don't recall if we've seen any Wrath yet or not. That's one of the cards to, to think about. But yeah, Hydrologist Secret, Harrison gonna come down, and it looks to me like everything was going face there. Mm -hmm. This is... Consistent with their game plan. Yeah, Tice and Team Netherlands have come into this game with a very specific game plan. And they're sticking to it. Looks like we may have to see a Yogg here from Legolas. Primordial Drake is okay. I don't, it doesn't look like it does quite enough. But who knows what Yogg will do. I mean, Primordial Drake... You run the Golem into the Curator, Fandral Hero Power into the Stegadon, then Drake comes down, clears off three minions, leaves a 5-2. It's okay. Okay. Yep, you're right. That's actually not so bad at all. And Tice is going to struggle to get rid of this Primordial Drake. Primordial Drake is just a card that most decks seem to struggle to deal with. We talked about it with Priest earlier, but it's not just Priest. That 8 health is... it's a big wall. You get a 4 8 and a 3 1 still. He may just have to play Primordial Drake of his own to get rid of these uh, other minions. Imagine if that was a repentance. That would have set up That would have been Drake. really unfortunate. Yeah. Um, good ordering from, from Legolas there, so the getaway Kodo procs. Well, the Stegadon was just played first, so mm -hmm. it would have always brocked on there. Silly me. So True Silver Champion allows Tice to get rid of the Primordial Drake. Mm. Primordial Drake allows Tice to get rid of the Fandral and puts the opponent's Primordial Drake down to one. You can also have Primordial Drake and Doomsayer. Uh, again, he's just one mana short. Oh yeah, not, he's got not, nine mana. Oh. Which was confusing because Brazil just had ten mana, yeah. but obviously they've used a I lot just of, sort of assumed. rampy things. <sighs> okay, then you can't stag it on True Silver Doomsayer. You can Stampede and Coda does really nothing. Um, Harrison, Harrison True Silver is okay. Harrison True Silver stag it on. Yep. I You've like got Equalities in the deck, and Primordial Drake is your only follow up to Equality right now. Oh, Doomsayer. Good too. Blocks Brazil from playing anything else if they don't have any removal. If Brazil had a Wrath here, it would be huge. But Brazil don't have any way of clearing their Doomsayer. That's that's very unfortunate for them. I don't have any way to heal either. Is it Yogg time? It can't be Yogg time. I owe a Death Rattle to a 6-6. Six, six. Yes, that's not bad. There's no way that 8 damage is coming from hand. So you're not dead. But any board that... Tice has after this could kill you. I like this a lot, actually. That's a good spot. I uh, summons the 5-5, five, five, then summons the 6-6. Six, six. Tice now has this threat to deal with. Tice might just throw down Rag Light Lord, though. Yeah, I think so. If, uh, if Brazil couldn't deal with the Doomsayer, they probably won't be able to deal with Rag Light Lord. Seems like some sound logic to me. Um, Primordial Drake is fine too, and then the weapon deals with the 6-6. Six, six. Mm. Gonna just go with that. Can even put down Hydrologist. All right, sure. Get away, Kodo. You need the value. The other two cards just don't cut it. Could you get cheeky with Ooh. Eye for an Eye? Yeah, I was just thinking that too. Jades are on 7-7 seven, seven moving forwards. A lot of Legolas' healing is gone. He should still have two health skills, though. I think that's the problem. 
if one Earthen Scales is played, it kind of shuts down the eye for an eye. Wrath drawn, one turn too late for Brazil. Fandril is gone now. When do you have to yog? You gotta take back this board. Jade Spirit gives you a 7-7. Seven, seven. You think it's yog time now? It looks like, looks like he's praying to yog, so let's go. Third yog of the day, sort of. Oh, that'll do. That'll do as well. What? <laughs> oh. Okay, okay. So it wasn't... That's a little bit disappointing. <laughs> it wasn't completely mad then. Well. Tice for a second was just thinking to himself, this is not how I want to get knocked out of the Hearthstone Global Games. Unfortunately, I'm not sure which Hunter Secret that was. No, uh, we do not know. If we get word, we will, of course, uh, let you know which one it is. But Ragnaros Nightlord does look like the obvious way to go here. If that's not a snipe, that would... Oh, oh, it is a snipe. There you go, we got word of what it is. It's a snipe. And getting we code on Rag Lightlord's not bad either. No, it's great. Big threats are very difficult for Druid to deal with. They have to go through them with minions. Okay, Behemoth, Jade Spirit actually is... That's a huge That could turn. be the swing that Brazil needs here. Oh my goodness, that's a big turn. Not only does the Jade Behemoth block the Ragnaros Light Lord from hitting the face, we get a 7-7 seven, seven and 8-8 eight, eight Jade Golem. No equality combo in hand for Tice. And neither piece of it either. Yeah. No Drake, no Consecration, no Pyromancer, and no equality. Tarum! Oh, so we trade and then we hero power Tarum. That's really, really good draw for this moment in time. Wow. So necessary. Is there any way that Tice can hold on until he can play? Ugh, no, I don't mm. think he can. Without Tarum, Tice. I just went dead. It's a secret's getaway, Kodo. If the Rag Light Lord had healed itself, Stegadon would have come down, so it's, it still wouldn't have been lethal. Yeah, that's Forbidden Healing as well. Like, mm. Essentially, Tice could have used the Forbidden Healing to heal up Rag Light Lord, and then Rag Light Lord would have. Still may just not go for the. No, he's gonna do it. Because now the Terra will 100% heal Uther. Yeah, right. That worked out very nicely, actually. Or light Lord. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. And now it takes the hero power and both trades to get rid of Tarim. If there wasn't a Wrath there, like Light Lord would stick mm -hmm. around. But there is a Wrath there. And that getaway Kodo is going to do something. It's up to Brazil, really, which card comes back to life, though. Is he gonna I don't wrath? know what you'd rather give them. I think you'd rather Probably give them. Rag light Lord. Yeah, exactly. You'd rather give them that because. But you have no Jades, so. You will have, though. Wait, he's Wrath? Yeah. Oh, okay, sure. Wrath, wrath for one, run him in. That's so unfortunate. Legolas looks... I don't think he's happy. Oh. Okay. Raglite Lord sticks around another turn. Tarim goes back into Tice's hand. This is turning. It was looking like it was Tyson's game at the start, then over to Brazil. But now the fact that Tyson's going to be able to deal with the next wave of Jade Golems fairly easily, and he's still going to have two equalities in the deck somewhere, things are looking uh, things are looking brighter for Team Netherlands. Though Tyson does need to get rid of the Scandal Sound Auctioneer before it's too late. And that does mean, I guess, playing Primordial Drake and then using the weapon to clear up the Auctioneer. <sighs> Keeping Rag Light Lord alive. Can't just use the second Terum here. No. no. No, no, that's way too valuable now. Problem is, the Primordial Drake's quite valuable too, because there should still be two equalities in the deck. Mm -hmm. But yeah. I don't think we've seen a Consecration I think there's, either. Yeah, there's Consecration left. So of those 11 cards, there should be two equalities and two Consecration. Oh, wow. Which is great and all, but if Tice runs out of minions and runs out of ways to actually kill Brazil, kill. Yeah, then, then it doesn't matter. Though we haven't seen Tyrion yet either. No. So there's there's still some really high value cards left. We got uh, five. Probably Stonehill Defenders too. Yeah. Although some people have cut Stonehill Defenders. 
Nah, I'm not one of those people. No. Not in Paladin, at least. Like, it, it's more common to be to be cut in Shaman. Mm. It's like two Terrams is good. But How I, about I agree with four you. Terrams? I Stonehill Defender is just too strong. Woo woo, that's nine. So there's still three copies of Jade Idol in the deck that Legolas shuffled with that Fandral. Yes. He's looking for those with Gadgets and Auctioneer. Yeah. That's what you want. You want Gadgets and Auctioneer into Endless Jade Idols. Yeah, unfortunately, you're gonna, uh, Legolas is only going to have four mana even when that happens, which isn't the... Uh, it's not a huge amount of Jade Golems. He knows there's a Terum. He knows there's two equalities. I, if there's still an Outdoor Peacekeeper in, in Tysus' deck, which there may well be, he did play one very early, yeah. but if he there is still one, one early on. If, he, if there is still one, he's going to want to hold on to, to the Stampeding Kodo to just kill a Jade later, but otherwise, this is a good way to go. Just get rid of that 2-3 and put up a second taunt and just keep smacking the face. Tysus is so close now, but one Earth and Scales would shut him down. Legolas got his first Jade Idol. <laughs> Is it time, though? I don't know. If, if you then whiff the first draw, then... I mean, you might just have to shuffle this one. Okay, just sure. Just to ensure that you have five left out of nine. Tice is so close to just winning. Okay, he has to just go. And that's Jade Blossom. That'll have to do. It's, it's enough. Sort of. Sort of. Oh, he's so unhappy. Oh, there's oh, an effect. Oh, there's oh. an effect. All right, slow down. Slow down. No one. All right, and okay, there's uh, the, got scales. the scales. Oh, wow, boy. Suddenly, gosh. this looks terrible for Tice one more time. There's oh, the Jade God. Golem. The Jade Idol. I'm almost out of and there's another. Oh, and this one's being shuffled, of course. Got to play and this is one of the craziest series I think I've ever seen. <laughs> <laughs> Talk about coming down to the okay. wire. Okay, is there a smart way that, that Tice can use Doomsayer here uh, so that it sets up for a Tyrion, which could be top decked next turn? Can you tear him and then Doomsayer? Well, this is what I'm thinking. Tear him, trade away the Auctioneer to prevent the endless Yeah, like, like Hero nightmare. Power, Hero Power, tear him, Doomsayer. Right. That's probably it. To trade away the... Uh, use the Kodo to get rid of the 4-4. And then it should take too much for Legolas to be able to trade into the Stegodon and also the Doomsayer. And I'm thinking that might just be Tice's best bet now, to hope that his next draw is Tyrion mm -hmm. and try and get some tempo back that way. Uh, okay, he's done it slightly differently. This actually makes more sense. It keeps the Stegodon alive too. Yeah. Oh, he's actually... Okay, he's not played the Doomsayer. Sure. Okay. That's fine too. You, I guess, don't want your board to die, but you know that crazy stuff coming out from, from the Jade Idols this turn. You just have to. I think I still would have liked to see Doomsayer here. But Consecration still in deck. Equality Consecration is still a yeah. huge threat. It, it, the problem is that you combination time. That combination can't be played with Tyrion. That's the problem. Oh boy. Hero Power gonna make short work of that Staggerdon. Uh, or does Legolas decide he needs to play some Jade Idols right now? Might make more sense for him to do that. We could get to the point where Brazil can only play one Jade Idol a turn, and then Tyrion gets picked up. And we see it takes a couple hits to yeah. kill that, and then yeah. Tyrion's Ashman can do some work. But I've got to admit, as time goes on, it's looking worse and worse for Team Netherlands. I think you... Oh, man. I mean, if a quality Consecration comes out here, it's Punish. Ah, that's Tyrion. If he played the Doomsayer last turn. It's not enough. If he played the Doomsayer last turn, this would have come onto an empty board. <sighs> okay, so equality, and you kill the Primordial Drake in the 13-13, and then you play Tyrion. Okay. And then the 12-12 okay. dies to Tyrion anyway. Okay, that's not It so has bad. to be equality Tyrion. But then any Consecration you pick up is just a dead draw. I think there's a second equality still in the deck. I believe that this is Tice's first one. Oh, 
Well, there you go. Step one. Play the equality. Step two. Play Tyrion. Put your faith in the light. Obviously, Gluttonous Ooze is there and ready to deal with the Ashbringer. If Tice has a surpriseness off, then maybe he has a oh, chance. Man. If his next two draws are Stonehill Defender into Tyrion to Nazoth, that's maybe still too slow. I think I think it's all over. The gluttonous oozed, cut down the Ashbringer, and then the Jade Idol for a 14-14 here. There's the first mm -hmm. Consecration drawn by Tice. I mean, Doomsayer can come down and you can try to soak up 14 damage. Yeah, uh, as you said, Tice has got time. And then you hope that you draw. If the next draws a con an equality, then yeah. that buys him a little bit more time. The last two cards in Legolas's deck, are they both just Jade Idols? I honestly lost count of I feel like we've only shuffle. seen one Earthen Scales. Okay, so potentially Earthen Scales Jade Idol. Like, you could be right. It's either Earthen Scales Jade Idol or Double Jade Idol. Mm -hmm. It's one, one of those two combinations. Hopefully someone on Team Brazil has been keeping track. I wonder... Not on the line for these guys. This, I mean, this, this is it. The winner of this game moves on to the top eight of the Hearthstone Global Games, and the loser oh, is done. Yeah, and the top eight is an accolade that both of these teams are really going to want. That's a team the Netherlands may... It, it's, it's, it's something that the Netherlands may feel like they can't afford to lose out on. Mm -hmm. As but it's also something that Brazil needs. I mean, I, most of their competitive experience has been limited to the Copa America tournaments. Yeah. If he shuffles this, I think we can get a pretty good idea that it's Earthen Scales. But if he plays this and there's no Jade Idol left, yeah, it's Earth and Scales. Okay. You just can't take the risk of second equality consecration by playing it and not having additional resources. So the only out for Tice here is if he draws a quality now and can play a quality consecration Doomsayer and then draws something good. Like an is off. Yeah. Or Stonehill. Stonehill. Into... It's Tarim. Tarim. Yeah. yeah. Nope. Oh, hang on a sec. That buys them an extra turn though, doesn't it? I mean, you can you yeah. can doomsay or in forbidden healing for sixteen. I think you just forbidden healing though. If you forbidden healing now, you put yourself back on twenty-seven. You're not dead, and then if you then draw the equality, you can then equality consecration into something else. Your only win condition is if you can equality consecration doomsayer. So I like this. Spike Reach Steed buys Tyson another turn. Uh, yeah. Steed on the Doomsayer. Steed. No, you well, can Steed yeah. the dude in Doomsayer. Yeah, yeah, that's right. It's better. Buys him another turn so that, again, if his next draw is a quality, then a quality, Consecration, Doomsayer, into whatever else. But with only five cards left in the deck, given that one of them is an, one of them is a, an equality, and I think one of them is still a Consecration. You can remove, 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 but you need to win somehow. Yeah. And Legolas is never fatiguing. No. Doomsday does go off here, actually. So any any big minion that Tice gets now could be the Stonehill Defender turn. Though he'd have to draw the exact right card. Ah. Uh. That's just not what you want if you're no. tired. He's trying so hard. He's trying to pull through and win this game. He needs to do it for his team, for his country, and, after, and after, for all of his fans. After that last game. Yeah. With Tyler pulling through in, in such a clutch moment. There are so many Tice fans watching the Hearthstone Global Games from back home right now. I know you guys are there. I know you guys want to see your favorite streamer get through and win this. After what I've seen today, I really want to see him get through too. There's another turn bought by the Outdoor Peacekeeper. It's one more turn. <laughs> Are there Stonehill defenders in this freaking deck? Well, there's three cards left, and I think one of them is an equality, so. It, it could be two Stonehill defenders it could in be. the bottom two cards. It, it really could be. Would two more Terrams be enough? 
Maybe. Consecration, uh, a quality consecration into Stone Hill Terrarium. They're only playing one Jade Golem a turn, and you're turning them into three threes each turn. There's a Stone Hill Defender! About time. Oh, my uh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> no. oh dear. So, it's the Mogushan Warden, right? Because you can play that and also fit in a hero power. There's no reason to pick Ancient of Blossoms instead. Yeah. Reporting for duty. Actually, this board is starting to stick. <laughs> I mean, it's annoying. Brazil can only get through the the the, the Stonehill Defender or the Mercutian Warden. Then you go through the Warden. If there's an equality, then Tice is actually still building up a board, and there should be an equality. It should the last two cards should be equality Stonehill Defender? Mm -hmm. But there should also be an Earthen Skills left for Legolas that we think. For Legolas, yeah. Yeah. And that could be. If you ever trust it, health. I'm almost out of cards. That's the second, second stone. Hill. Literally in the bottom three cards yeah. of the deck. But Tice wanted a quality. Oh, that's so unlucky. Tice wanted a quality this turn, so he could clear Tarim the board. Tarim is still great. Up. There's Tarim. All right. Tarim's All right. fantastic. <laughs> what is going on? Does he just play it now? I guess. Yeah. Of yeah. course you do. You've got three taunts on the board now. One of them eats up two of these guys under hero power. If only Tice could fit in a hero power too. <laughs> like Alyssa's reaction to that. <laughs> I don't blame him. Not even a little bit. You just gotta push Tice. The thing is, Legolas has played this very smart. He has an, a spare Jade Idol in his hand, mm -hmm. which means even the turn he has to shuffle, he's still going to be able to develop an extra Jade Go. Yeah. This is an incredibly well played game from both players here. The fact that Tice even has a chance is fan it's just incredible. It's more than a chance. He's almost out of cards. ahead. Very ahead. Yeah. Yeah, there's going to be three minions alive at least for Tice by the end of this turn. He's got double consecration. Are you sure there's an Earth and Scales left? Oh, no, I'm not 100% I'm not sure. Yeah. Was... Deck Dracker, where are you at? <laughs> so, you can take six off board. There's four from Consecration in hand. That's 13 with the nine on board. Uh huh. Tice is the last there. card from Tice is probably a quality. Yeah. So if this board goes, Brazil nice will win. Oh, Brazil will win. If if they can clear this board. All oh, right, sure. If you know if they have Earth and Scales and they oh yeah, pick if they it have that Scales, sure. Because the quality consecration just just clears Legolas's mm -hmm. board, leaves Tice with. So you can't, oh you can't shuffle this because you need Earth and Scales if it's your last card. Yeah, there's a quality consecration. I'm glad we were able to track that. Yeah. Oh. I was like, there's Stonehill defenders. You're like, there's equalities. Wait, that's, that's, just, that's lethal. just lethal. Okay. Oh God. What an incredible series. So many unfavored matchups for the Netherlands, but they were able to take it away. And Cora, I know that's oh your team out, God. but you, you've got to be happy about this result after what we just saw. I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm incredibly happy for the Netherlands there. They deserve this just as much oh. as anybody else. But man, you got to feel bad for Brazil after this one. They just they took a beating in the last two games, games that were theirs to win. and. It's not even anything that they did. That series has completely wiped me out. I cannot believe the comebacks. Just all of the way through that series, uh, the, the Yogg wasn't able to do it. Let's take a look one more time at what just went down. That was insane. Alternating wins all the way through that match. Liam Main taking game one, then Tice, then Legolas, then Tyler, and then Tice one more time. Like the, the last 10 minutes of that Druid versus Paladin, I was like, okay. You can breathe a sigh of relief. Brazil has this. There's, there's, there's no way that they lose. Let's, let's talk. One, to Team one draw. Let's one see point how of they're Hey, Tyler. Hey. Firstly, congratulations. That's one of the intense, the most that, intense that series insane. of Hearthstone that we've ever seen. Yeah, I, I don't know what just happened. Like, <laughs> we all have no idea what just happened. You had some, uh, I think, unfavored matchups all the way through that. Uh, yeah. How were your team feeling throughout that series?
Um, like going in when we knew the pairings, we were already feeling really bad because we we kind of had a feeling that we had all the bad matchups. So yeah, it felt pretty bad. And then we really wanted to take the Druid versus Hunter. I think J Druid versus Hunter is not that bad of a matchup, but they just went like coin high main into high main. So then at that point, it was basically over. But yeah, after we took that one, we were already fighting from behind, and then. We got it back to 1-1 one, one that was expected with the Shaman versus Rogue. Right. And then we went 2-1 behind with the... The Rogue versus the Mage. Mm-hmm. With the Rogue versus yeah. Mage, that was also expected. And then we knew that we probably had a good matchup with the Warrior versus the Shaman. Uh, but then that game was also insane. Uh, <laughs> how it ended. And yeah, that last game. Your one in six, yeah. We we went into like a very unfavorable matchup because we didn't run the Zoth. Honestly, we, like when we scouted them, we were hoping for a bit more aggressive lineup, but they kind of got us there with. Right. Um, and this was gonna be my decks. this was gonna be my next question for you. You said to me yesterday that that you've noticed some patterns with Brazil. You're gonna try and use that to your advantage. Yeah. Like we we noticed they they would pair the same the same classes pretty often. Uh huh. And we would also notice that they played pretty aggressive decks, and like we kind of expected them to play Hunter again. Like they, they do that a lot, the Hunter with the Book Flare. So we tried to like build our lineup around that, but then it just ended up not working out with uh, the way the matchup paired. Well, it ended up working out in the long run. I, yeah. I, I have I have to ask. The one in six, after you just got <laughs> repeatedly beaten down by ragshots that would not kill that Storm Guardian. <laughs> How did yeah, that like I, I mean, we missed like five fifty fifties or something, and then at the end we had three cards in the deck. One of which, which was whirlwind. Mm-hmm. One yeah, was, oh, you're right. Yeah. And the one was uh, a useless card. I don't remember. So like, it was a one in three to get the whirlwind yeah. to get a full but right. guaranteed win already. And then when we missed that, then yeah, that to be the one in six. Well, I, I think you definitely deserved that series. So uh, yeah. c- congratulations. <laughs> you, you guys played your hearts out. Very well done and best of luck. Definitely game I would recommend everyone else. Oh, tunes yeah. in at any other that time. Come back and watch series. it. It's great. Thanks for your time, Tyler. Congratulations. Yeah. We'll see Thank you, you again next week. You'll be playing, I think, Ukraine. So yeah. It just, gets, just gets harder. <laughs> Oh. Good lord, I, I'm i like, I'm tapped out after this, but we still have another series. <laughs> well, next series is going to be an interesting one. Let's take one more oh, look at the bracket. and Goodness gracious. Take a look at how little went. That's the, the, the first page. We've seen all of that. We've seen the rest of that Thursday. Second page, though. Yep, Netherlands versus Ukraine coming up next week. But finally today, Mexico versus Italy. Uh, the rematch. Because Mexico were able to take down Italy last week with quite a convincing win. So now Italy, they need to get this one. Last week it didn't matter, they were already through, but this time they need to win. It's a very important game for both sides. Italy, my pick. Uh, oh, I'm getting ahead of myself. We have some replays to watch. Sorry about that. I'm trying to get away from this traumatic oh God, I've experience. I've been reliving it over and over again in my mind, and now here we can see it. First game went to Brazil. Coin high main into high main later on was, was too much for the Jade Druid to handle. So Brazil took game one. But we all know how it ended. <laughs> yeah, it was it was just stressful. Game one was very long series. Game one was fine. Game one was game one normal. was was ex- you know it was it was it was a little nuts. Two high mains, crazy, but game one was not that bad. Right. Okay. You know, game two. As Tyler said, a lot of the early games were expected. They wanted that win. Um, this game, I think he said that this win was expected there. Yeah, obviously, yeah. Mm-hmm. Shaman against Rogue. Got the early bloodlust. Okay, again, normal. Uh, Miracle nothing, Rogue, but normal. Nothing too crazy here. You're like, oh, Miracle Rogue. That's fun. Unusual. But the Shaman got the win. Yeah, next game was fine too. It was the Rogue versus, versus the, mage. the Mage, which you mm-hmm. expect the Mage to win. Yep. The Mage won. Uh, it was a good fight from Theo, if I remember rightly, it with was. the Cabalist Tome. There was, this, there there. was a lot of fun stuff in this game. It went to fatigue as well. A lot of card generation. Pretty crazy. They had that ice block, but it went to fatigue, so it didn't matter. Mm-hmm. Had to sign auctioneer during all the cards. So Brazil got this one. One up, two, one. Okay. At this point, Legolas was looking, he was looking happy. He was like, oh, we got this. And this is where it got weird. <laughs> then game four and five happened. <laughs> we had the Nazoth Shaman versus the Quest Warrior. Um... I don't even know how to describe this game, Cora. Uh, uh, yeah, so that, that's about it. Yeah, uh. Nizoth was a pretty 
awful here, actually. It didn't do much of anything. Um, Tyler didn't even have to use the first brawl until after Nazoth was already, you know, cleaned up, everything gone. It's when, it's when Sulfurus came online that things got a little weird. And if, you, <laughs> if you didn't catch this game, I would encourage you to go back and watch it. Yeah, maybe Watch game number four of this series. Maybe mute the broadcast so you don't hear us say that yeah, Tyler won it, it way before yeah. he did. <laughs> but just absolutely go and watch hey, we weren't the series. Wrong. We weren't wrong. Tyler did take <laughs> it away. But it, like we thought that Brazil had it, then we thought Tyler had it, then yeah. we thought Deloxodontis had it again. And finally, Tyler, and as we said, there was there was a whirlwind in the deck, double sleep with the fishes and execute. Mm -hmm. If you picked up the whirlwind from this game one and three. was just 100% one, but I think he picks up Blood of Brave here. Yeah, that's right. And uh, he had to rely on the, there it is. He had to rely on this one in six. Loxodontis is like, yes, I'm about to win. Brazil are about to go through. Not so fast, Loxodontis. We're going slow motion. Oh, all right, there it is. <laughs> Loxodontis is reacting. Heartbreak and <laughs> elation all in two cams. Yogs are on from this Legolas. Was, this was a good Yogg. This was a Yogg that, that, that yeah. did some work. It wasn't like extreme good like the one we saw earlier. Yeah, it, it, it was, did kill it. Was it was like, like middling. It was 10 mana, clear the board. It was Deathwing minus yeah. the minion that lives. Yeah, and that was, that was a snipe as well. Yeah. If but, that had been a freezing trap, if the Yogg hadn't died, there, there's just so many little things that oh, could change okay. this series but this tarum this tarum was game winning and again watch this, this what did it watch this game if you if you didn't watch it if you've only just tuned in go back and watch this oh boy the, the way Ty played this though consecration the, the way he played pyromancer on turn two into outdoor peacekeeper on turn three trying to get that damage through we still believe there was we, earth and we scales. are pretty dang certain there was an earth and scales as that last card <laughs> Brazil yeah. needed to shuffle every time they shuffled Jade Idols to have infinite Jade Idols, and you saw they got up to 18-18. That, oh, that's, that's insane. Oh, but I... just one draw, one point of health, anywhere in there for either of those teams could have changed this series dramatically. That's one for the record. Right. We are going to need to go to a short break now just to catch our breath after that series. But next up, it's going to be Italy. My pick to win the whole thing versus Mexico. Uh, your, your pick's been wiped out. I'm sure that you're going to want to see my pick wiped out now. I just, just as much. Um, I'll think about it. Later. We'll be back in just a few moments.